championship weekend in Arlington. 1,242 schools began the season chasing a dream. In the 4A Division I championship, it's Argyle and Navasota, and it's coming up next. Texas high school football is a tradition, unlike anywhere else. And winning a state championship is something that can be cherished for life. In the great state of Texas, football is king. From the wide open spaces out west to the... I'm Eric. One of Texas' greatest events, the high school football championships, is coming up next. of 10 to crown 10 brand new high school football state champions of Texas. The second of three in the triple header. The number one team in the state, the Navasota Rattlers, and the number two team in Texas, the defending state champion, Argyle Eagles. Live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Fox Sports Southwest and the UIL proud to present the 4A Division I State Football Championship, the unbeaten Navasota Rattlers against the undefeated Argyle Eagles. Hi again, everybody. I'm Craig Way, joined by the coach, Brad McCoy, number one against number two. Everybody always wants to see number one, number two. They're going to get it this afternoon. Absolutely. What a great matchup. And somebody's going to leave not happy today, and it's going to be a great game to see who that's going to be. Not only are they going to see number one against number two, you're going to see a real contrast in styles with their offense, beginning with top-ranked Navasota and the record-setting passing attack led by their quarterback, Shelton Epler, and Trendavian Dixon, their outstanding record-setting wide receiver. I tell you what, these two are unbelievable. And to be able to watch them today and all the records they've already broken and what they could possibly break today, Epper and Dixon are just true tremendous players uh, without, you know, 67 touchdowns and 35 receiving. So it's going to be fun to watch them, and it's going to be tough for Argyle to hold them down. Dixon with those 35 touchdown catches on a total of just 78 total receptions. Then you look at the Phoenix State champion Argyle. Winners of 31 in a row. How do they do it? Great defense and on the ground with Arizona State University commit the outstanding Nick Ross you know Ralston does a great job last year he did a tremendous job but he had a little help he's really the horse they're gonna have to ride today he's gonna have to be consistent hold the football and run for big yards and he's you know if you look at just what he's done in the playoffs it's almost a season for most people no doubt about that over a thousand rushing yards in the postseason along with 15 postseason touchdowns and 2,500 yards rushing overall Argyle Navasota a Division I state championship coming up next. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. The Argyle Eagles, the Navasota Rattlers for the 4A Division I state title moments ago in the Navasota locker room with head coach Lee Fedor. All right, guys, I don't need to say much after that. You know what it's all about. We've been talking about it since August 4th. And now that ultimate goal is here. We've always talked about going 1-0, 1-0. We still want 1-0 because we want to finish. We want to walk out of there with a smile on our face. And like I always tell you guys, you go out and you play Navasota Rattler football, all good things can happen. Just lay it all out on the line for your brothers and your community. Let's be focused, 48 minutes. Play with all your heart and soul. Touch somebody. The message to the Rattlers about the Argyle Eagles. Let's go down to the sidelines for the third member of our Fox Sports Southwest State Championship crew, Kirk Bentley. Yeah, Coach, 31 straight wins, a second consecutive state title on the line. What kind of confidence does your team have today? Well, they're too young to have too much confidence, so they've got a lot of uh, athleticism and a lot of unknowing what's going on, but they're going to get out there and play hard today. Navasota with one of the most dangerous passing attacks in the state. How does your defense slow them down? Uh, we just got to figure out a way to get them stopped. We're going to try to put some pressure on them and, and make them throw some air passes and see if we can get the ball in our offense's hands. Thanks. Craig, back to you. Brooke, thank you very much. And 
You heard Todd Rogers say they got to feel like they've got to get some stops against Navasota's powerful offense. And they're going to get the opportunity right off because Navasota's going to get the football to start the game. They really are, Craig. You know, you can't get this, let this get out of the way. I mean, it, you've got to control the, the sum of this game clock. You can't let that score get up there 14 points, or then it's going to be really like a snowball. The Eagles, head coach Todd Rogers, who is now in his 12th season. At Argyle, building the program there. Over 130 wins in his time. And the Rattlers to get the football with Nick Durka, Sammy Blair, and Jabrell Lipscomb. The deepest of the three, back deep to receive the opening kickoff. Bruno Strada, you'll hear his name quite a bit this afternoon into this evening. He is their punter. He is a receiver, he is a defensive back, and he will kick off for our guy. And he will kick off very well. I mean, in our last game, we saw powerful, powerful offensive defense, but you know we didn't see a huge part of the kicking game. I think Estrada's going to play a huge portion of this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he kicks his first one out of the end zone. Number two, kicking off to number one for the 4A Division I state title, and here we go. This one will drive into the end zone for a touchback. So... The Rattlers, led by Shelton Epler, astounding numbers when you look at Epler, completing 69% of his passes, nearly 5,000 yards, and one touchdown pass shy of Travis Quintanilla's record, set at Refurio a couple of seasons back. 67 touchdowns against 11 interceptions. That's pretty tough. Be joined in the backfield by LaMarcus Jefferson who himself has rushed for nearly 700 yards, even with this potent passing game. And the first play from scrimmage obviously will be a pass. Incomplete, went in between two receivers, Sammy Blair and Devon Jernigan. And incomplete, you take a look at the four starting lineups for the Rattlers, Michael Coffey, Zach Pavlock, Dorian Myers, Chris Cavanaugh, and Cal Bauer across the front for Navasota. LaMarquise Jefferson, Trent Davian Dixon, the record-setting receiver, Jabrell Lipscomb, Devon Jernigan, and Sammy Blair, the wideouts. Second down and 10 for the Rattlers. A toss outside to Jefferson, turning the corner. And Jefferson forced out of bounds by Dane Ledford. Sophomore free safety. As you look at the forward defensive lineup for the Argyle Eagles. Hudson Speed, Jacob Ford, the defensive ends, and the three down interior linemen, Shane McKinney, Johnny Alday, and also out there on the linebacking court in the secondary, Hunter Marquardt, Drew Estada, Dane Ledford, and Zach Zabrowski. Toss on third down, turn in the corner, a first down, a stiff arm, and then a flag down. LaMarcus Jefferson would have it up for the first down before being forced out by Dane Ledford. It would be an 18-yard game, but let's check the flag. Looks like Hunter Marksworth had a little hold out there and couldn't get away and try to make that tackle, so that's going to come back. San Antonio chapter of officials. Holding on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay. Third down. One of the keys here, Brad, will be the spot of the foul from where it where it was. And the ball will be put down at the 29-yard line. So it's still third down and five for Navasota coming up. Third and five for the Rattlers. And for the first time, a throw to Trendavian Dixon, and he makes the catch. For the first down of the 40-yard line, Zimbraski was all over it with the coverage, Brad, but Trendavian Dixon, so talented. He really is. Ran a great stop on the sticks. That's a great throw from Epper. That's the toughest throw in football. Opposite hash, throwing an out or a stop route to the sideline. Uh, that just shows a lot of, of, of great work, timing work with those two. First and 10, the ball at the 40-yard line. Navasota, its first possession and on the move. Epler motioning, and we have false start call against the Rattlers. A lot of motion in their line, and sometimes false start. False on start. the offense, number one, the five-yard penalty, still first down. Again, you see, you see uh, Argyle 
showing man-to-man -man bump and run coverage, then before the snap, backing out into his own look and uh, caused the Rattlers to jump there. So now it'll be first and 15 back at the 35-yard line. Epler looking to throw again. Now pressure coming, and the Eagles have it. Taylor Sweat, Jacob Ford in on the tackle. A loss of five. Great, great pressure there, but really a coverage sack. Uh, Argyle really had them covered up. You can see they go man-to-man -man and bump. They got a safety over the top. Epler had no place to go with the ball. Really hit that third step. Should have fired, but he had no place to go. Second and 20 after the loss of five on the sack. And Epler looks to throw again. A little more time and going for Dixon. Trent Davian Dixon had it knocked away from him by Zach Zimbrowski. Zimbrowski had the crucial interception to save the day against Graham in the state semifinals last Friday night, and he knocks the ball away to prevent a touchdown here. Yeah, great elevation there. He's a little, he's a little, he's beat by a couple of plus steps, but he goes up. Great elevation just at the last minute. And a timeout called by Argyle because the Eagles unable to get the personnel they wanted on the field. Todd Rogers unhappy with the fact that he had to use a timeout, but Argyle takes a timeout before third down and 20. Coming up, another look at the play by Zabraski. Yeah, Shelton Epler just left that a little short. I know he's got a great arm, and sometimes at the beginning of a game, you're all pumped up. You're not sure. Uh, he underthrew that just a little bit, but great play by Zabraski to get that hand up and knock it away. Brings up third down and 20, as we mentioned, and then Argyle using a timeout to have the personnel they want on the field. Zabraski is a senior in the corner. Todd Rogers is not happy that they had to use a timeout there, but now they have the personnel they want on the field defending this third and 20 for Navasota. Out of the backfield and across the middle, dragging a big catch for Sammy Blair. Across midfield, Blair, a strength of 31 yards on the catch and run for a first down before Colton Liggett can wrap him up. Really tough. De defensive, they're up in a bump and a run. They got a free safety over the top, but that linebacker, that back coming out, he's got to cover that, and he just, he just couldn't catch him out of the backfield. But there's no one else there. Everybody else is running man to man. Rattlers, first and 10 at the Argyle Eagle 38. Opening possession of the ball game. Shelton Epler. In the middle and unable to hold it was Jabrell Lipscomb. Again, you see the same concept. You know, got defenders running. You got a 5 1 look with one linebacker. He's reading quarterback. Uh, and that backside drag is coming through. Safety's too deep to defend it. Uh, Argyle's going to have to do something uh, because they don't have an answer for that particular formation in play right now. Second down and 10 for the Rattlers. And we're checking with the sideline now, ready to throw again. Hit as he throws downfield and looking for Lipscomb incomplete, but he really took a pop. Did uh, Shelton Epler on that pass play? Yeah, Scott Smith came in from his outside backer position and really quick, a little bit of an undersized linebacker, but man, he came in and put some great pressure on Epler. Uh, he wanted to get the ball deep, just couldn't get anything stepping into that throw. Four. The last shot there, and now it's third down and 10 at the Eagle 38. And Epler under pressure again, wrapped up again, and sacked for the second time. Hudson Speed, the junior defensive end, drops Epler for a loss of eight. Great pressure, great scheme. You see a lot of things going on there on the interior line. Just a straight bull rush. Just beat the center off the line of scrimmage. He took two with him. And his speed was able to come right in the back door. Great, well, great defensive set. And Argyle gives up one big play, but the Eagle defense holds, and they'll force an Avisota punt from Ryan Perry, the senior, who's averaged 42 yards per kick. Now, unique splits here. Unique what they're going to see if they punt out of this formation. At very wide splits. But Perry, the left footer, will angle for the corner. Under it, fielding it, is Hunter Marquardt. And Marquardt will bring it out to the 18-yard line. And that is where Argyle will have it for the first time. 
led by their senior quarterback, Cooper Rogers, the son of the head coach. Yeah, that's a fun deal. <laughs> I have a feeling you know a little <laughs> something about that. But not only does your son play on your football team that you coach, but he's your quarterback, and he's a good one. Rodgers completing 61% of his passes for nearly 2,100 yards this season. Yeah, there's a special relationship with the, with the head coach and your son's a quarterback. You, you know, you're probably more uh, rigid and harder on them than you are anybody, and, you know, they, they have to perform well. So I know I know there's a little nervousness uh, uh, in the Rodgers family today as he's in the finals. First down, Nick Rostin, his first carry of the day. And Rostin with a quick gain of six yards on first down. There's the numbers on Cooper Rogers. Cooper, Cooper's done a great job taking over as a senior this year. He's done a lot of other things. We'll talk about him through the day, but a really, really smart player. Second down and four. Rogers to the air. Caught and right at the first down marker, J.C. Chalk. The junior tight end on the catch. And it's just a little bit shy of the first down. As you look at the four starting lineup, Matt Heider, Zach Mann, Austin Burks from the center, Matt Wagner, and Ty Smith, the offensive front, Nick Rostin in the backfield with Dane Ledford, Drew Estrada, Blake DeWoody, and receivers. And it is enough for the first down. Lead off to Rostin again. Nick Rostin, six yards. Very similar to what we saw in the first series of downs here. As you look at the Navasota defensive front with Marquez Bird, Austin Good, Christian Jones there, and Jabril Hunter, E.J. Harris, Taylor Soto, William Hoff, the linebacker, Jabril Lipscomb, Janavian Dixon will see the secondary, Devon Jernigan, and Terry Powell. The pass incomplete. Intended target was Estrada. We'll bring up third down and four for Argyle. But this is the Eagle formula. See if they can hit you for a gain or two significantly from Ross. And if they still need something, then go to the air. They will. And they, they're, they're very efficient with that. But they are going to have, I mean, Ralston's their guy. Uh, he, he is a tremendous runner. He'll catch it out of the backfield. Uh, if you notice on the first down throw a while ago, the, the play action, it made people step up to Ralston and get opened up the receiver. Third and four for Argyle from the Eagle 34. And to Rostin, this time, ready for him. Navasota defense, LaMarcus Jefferson there. And they stop Nick Rostin after a gain of two. It brings up fourth down and two. The defense is kind of feeling each other out here these first couple of series. You know, where are you going to go? I got a feeling they had some new wrinkles as this game started and what the OCs had seen on game field. You can, you, you can see them trying to take some baby steps to see where they're going to go with it. Estrada will punt. And Trendavian Dixon is back deep to receive it. A rugby punt away from Dixon, but he'll backpedal the field from his own 13-yard line. Flag goes down. So too does Dixon. It's like we're going to three-yard punt. Uh, what a punt! I was, was going to say I don't think I'd punt to him, but when you can punt 53, you might want to do that. You might outkick your coverage. Do we, do we have a block in the back probably there? So that's going to bring it back to about the five. So deep, deep start for the Rattlers. The Rattlers going to have to begin deep in their own end of the field with their second On the return, lock in the back, number four, out the distance to the goal, Absoda's ball, first and ten. Each team picks up a first down. Each team ultimately forced to punt on its first possession. It'll be Absoda ball when we come back. First quarter of the 4A Division I State Championship. Scoreless here as we near the midway mark of the first quarter of the 4A Division I State Championship. Number one, Navasota. Number two, Argyle. The Rattlers of Navasota won a state title two years ago under Lee Fedora. The Blues capital of Texas down in the Brazos Valley. And you knew that about them, didn't you? I, 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 you know, I did, and you know, looking at their crowd, they've got that cowboy blue on. It looks like everybody feels really at home in here. <laughs> That's, of course, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. College football's national championship game to come in January. But this is state championship weekend for high school football, and Epler has to get rid of the football and does on first down. Pressure coming 
in the end zone. And there was a lot to bear. Yeah, I'm impressed with Argyle so far. They're really not doing anything uh, really different as, as far as twists and different moves. They're just they're just bringing people, bringing that backer in the gaps. And uh, Navasota's having a really hard time picking that up right now. That was David Bearden who brought the heat on Epler that time. Second down and 10 for the Rappers. Running back is Jefferson, but Epler to throw from his end zone. If he can, does get rid of the ball and caught. And here goes Brown. He broke free for Davian Brown. And a first down for Navasota. That's the danger of the Rattler receivers. They're all very, very good at catching the ball and then turning catches in the big catch and run. Exactly, and Epler made that happen there. I mean, he, he just stayed alive, stayed alive, stayed alive. Got his eyes up where he needed to right now. He knew where his receivers were going to be. Uh, that's a great play by the by the quarterback keeping that play alive. Hudson speed very nearly had a second sack, and it would have gone for a safety. Yeah, you go from losing two in the ball to a 40-yard gain. That's pretty good. Officially mark it. Well, a five-yard interference, sideline interference call. We'll move it out to the 47-yard line. That's right. Need, need an assignment. Who's my get-back coach over there? First and ten. For the Rattlers from the Navasota 47. And Epler looking at what a catch. That's Nick Gurka, the senior receiver. We're going to see a variety of receivers today, Brad. Gurka, a senior. Only his 14th catch of the year, but reliable and made a great catch and got the foot down. Absolutely. You don't, you don't throw for 5,000 yards in a, in a year and just go to one guy. So these guys are all capable, and it's a, a pretty good stop route. Try to go back shoulder, and the receiver did a great job. Epler again. Going deep for Dixon. Trent Davian Dixon. You rock him to sleep, and then you got Dixon on that backside that's going to outrun you. Uh, he was a step ahead while ago, and Epler threw it a little short, but he didn't make the same mistake that time. Touchdown pass, number 68 of the season for Shelton Epler, tying him with Travis Quintanilla on the all-time high school touchdown single-season passing list. And for Tredavion Dixon, he extends his national record with his 36th touchdown catch of the year on just 80 total receptions. The second catch of the day, the kick is good. And Minnesota strikes first. 94 yards in four plays. The touchdown pass to Dixon puts Navasota in front. Right now, a special message from State Farm. I'm Epler, touchdown pass number 68 of the season. It's Trendavian Dixon for the 36th time this season. And how about that scoring drive? 94 yards in four plays and nearly sacked for a safety by Hudson Speed. Yeah, they lived a little dangerously there, but again, just hitting some of those short routes, going away uh, from his number one target, Dixon, several times, and then, and then all of a sudden coming back to him for the big play. Big off. Michael Martinez. And running up the field at the 23-yard line is Gage McCook. Decent field position, certainly, for the Eagles. Another look at the touchdown, Brad. Yeah, you, just, you can see a great protection there, and, and they got one-on-one. -on -one. The safety kind of goes off to the other side, and Epper sees it. He's going that way the whole time, so he take a good, good drop, great protection, and, and great ball. 7-0 for top-ranked Navasota, and now number two Argyle to go back to work. Rodgers has Nick Roston with him in the backfield. Lost in the carry and big running run. For the senior, a first down run of 13 yards. That was a great punishing run, and you're going to see Ralston all night. He'd rather run over you than run around you. And, and it may not mean a whole lot right now, first, second quarter, but by the time that end of the third and fourth start, those kind of shots on that secondary are going to wear on them. And Ralston, he just got a, a great knack for running over those guys. And off to him again. Austin, right at the midfield strike. 
a gain of three yards. And here, here spoke again, of Ralston finishing the play, yeah, Brad. Here again, you know, he's got an opportunity to make a cut one way or the other, but he just lowers his head. And, uh, you know, that, that safety's going to think next time Ralston's out there, if, you know, how he wants to make that tackle. Second and seven for the midfield strike. And this time off play action, Rodgers getting away from a tackler and he'll pick up three more yards on a defender off his feet before Marquez Bird would bring him down. But nice movement there by the quarterback. Yeah, good play action. Everybody's keen on Ralston as well. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell Cooper, hey, once you make that, get back outside. Back in there on the inside, that's where everybody's <laughs> coming from. <laughs> it's third down and four. Rodgers. A toss to Rostin. And Rostin knocked down a little shy. It looks like it's just maybe a foot, if that, short of the first down. It's going to be very, very close. Nice job from Ty Smith uh, outside the tackle on the right side. Really got out to a good block on the corner. Uh, a lot of extra effort by that big boy defense or offensive tackle. It is short of the first down. And Argyle will go for it on fourth down and less than one. Any uh, guesses as to who's going to get the football? You can probably bet money on this one. And there it is, Boston. And it is a first down. Fourth down and less than one. No reason to think to do anything but give it to the senior running back. And he's across. What you won't see much tonight is, is Cooper going under center. Even on fourth and one, you know, they still have to stay in the shotgun and do what they do as opposed to getting under center. So uh, that'll, that'll be the little bit different that you might notice tonight from them. Nice move for the pile. Good surge forward by the offensive front for Argyle. Eagles on the move. And Rawson off the toss again. Again, lower in the shoulder. Once more good yardage, a gain of five on first down. Taylor Soto, Austin Good on the tackle. Great package there. Uh, Argyle came back with, with two tight ends. Haven't had a tight end all night. Came back with a double tight uh, formation. And uh, Navasota really had to balance out. And gave Austin a chance to really get out and do some things on the outside. Call it a six yard carry to the 36 and second down and four for the Eagles. Rodgers, this time all play action to throw. Over the middle, tipped and incomplete. Taylor Boyd had his hands on the football, tipped it, then tried to recover it. Pick it off, couldn't, but it's incomplete and now third down and four. Yeah, great job. Uh, Davian Jernigan, linebacker inside, just kind of made a, made a good job to squeeze off to the middle and we'll follow that play through, got his hands on it. Soto. Almost had an interception. Of course, he's around the ball all the time as Taylor Soto. Had 131 tackles coming into today's game. That's a lot of tackles. Third down and four for the Eagles. There's the Rossman. Stops short of the first down. Only a gain of a yard. Now it's a little more dicey on fourth and three coming up. It is. Austin Kude did a great job there. Really made the line of scrimmage go forward into the backfield. Didn't have Ross just didn't have any way to go. He ran into his own player first. So great surge by the Navasota defensive line. Now it's fourth and three. So I, you know you know what they're going to do here. You think we're Austin still, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised with some play action here. Fourth down and three. Argyle at the Navasota 35-yard line. To Rostin. First down and then lost the football, got it back and moved the chains. All in one run. It's a first down, a gain of seven. Well, they decided to stay with their stay with the one that brought them. And, uh, and Ross does a great job bouncing, sees it, feels it, bounces outside, uh, and then just you know, had a little butterfinger there. Great job falling back on the ball to avoid a little disaster there. That's a football version of elbow grease, right? That's exactly right. Heads up, getting back on it. Glad the ball bounced there. Slipped out of the crook of the arm, but then he was able to fall back on it in a first and ten for Argyle. From the 28 at Rodgers with pressure coming. Escaping for the moment, lost the football, and once more the Eagles able to get on it. Austin Bergstrom, the center, fell on it. It's a loss of seven yards. Marquez Bird and Christian Jones. 
Jones get on the tackle. Yeah, sometimes it's better for your quarterback just to get down. Uh, you know, he made about three spins there. Sometimes it's better to take that loss or throw it out of bounds. You know, he tried to make a lot happen. He ended up fumbling at the end of the play. Got lucky to, uh, to get back on it. Second down. 17 now. Back of the 35-yard line. And the counter back the opposite way. Lost him inside the 30, down to the 29. A gain of six. As Jabril Hunter made the tackle for the Rattlers. Really nice play there. You know, a little rollout sprint out scheme with a sprint draw back away. Gets that uh, Rattler defense that's so fast moving away from it. Ross was able to pick up uh, five or six and give him a manageable third and 10, 11 yards here to come in. So on third down. Rodgers to look over. That Argyle with the uh, banana sort of defense. And now Cooper throwing downfield. Caught short of the first down. The catch made by Gage McCook. Gain of four yards. Had another fourth down for Argyle to convert here on this march. They've already converted two. And, you know, they're in they're in Estrada's field goal range probably. It depends on what they want to do here at the beginning of this game. Gage Cook uh, really heads up little slot receiver there. Also plays a little quarterback uh, in their Wildcat. They, he's going to have he's going to have some holes to get to all well, day long. Well, Todd Rogers is going to let the first quarter clock expire to consider his options for quarter number two. We've come to the end of the first quarter of well, the UIL Class 4A Division I State Football Championship. The defending state titles and winners of 31 in a row. The Argyle Eagles find themselves trailing number one Navasota 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. To begin the second quarter from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, the 4A Division I State Football Championship of Texas, Argyle facing a fourth down and seven from the Navasota 25, and the Eagles to go for it. Cooper Rogers with time. Going for the end zone, tipped and incomplete. Almost intercepted and almost caught by Gage McCook. But it'll go over to Navasota. Yeah, Cooper just held on to that too long. Gage made a pretty good move to the corner. We needed to let it fly. Just uh, gave that safety too long to get there. He set one hesitation pump. If he throws it there, he may have an opportunity. Of course, Argyle in this first quarter has been 0 for 4 for until then. We're 0 for 4 on thirds down, but they were 2 for 2 on fourth. So they were actually doing better on fourth down than they were on third. First time stopped on fourth down, and so the Rattlers, after that last drive of 94 yards and four plays, capped by the 32-yard touchdown pass from Epler to Trendavian Dixon, go back to work. Shelton Epler over the middle. Catch made by Rodavian Brown. Remember, he had a big catch and run on the touchdown drive. Came in the senior with only 15 receptions for the season. Two big catches so far today, Brad. That one goes for 21 yards. That's a great seam right up. got it right on him. You know, Estrada is playing free safety. He's playing really deep. He's got to, he's going to have to inch up and get on that throw a little more. Epler looked left, throwing right and incomplete as Zabrowski broke up the pass for Dixon. So, Zach Zabrowski accepting the challenge of covering Trendavia Dixon. Yeah, that's three targets they've had to Dixon. He's knocked two of them down, and then, of course, he got beat uh, deep one time. He had a great opportunity to make an interception there, so he's working hard. Second and 10 from the Rattler 45. Epler and across the middle, a catch made by Sammy Blair, 16 yards and a first down before Colton Liggett can wrap him up. Again, that crossing route is really going to give uh, the Argyle kids a hard time because of the scheme that they're playing. It's just, just tough. There's a little pick in their ball, too, so they're going to have to really some tighten up, some loosen up. 10 for the Rattlers for the Eagle 40. Epler again caught for Davian Brown. It's a, it's a scheme right now that you've got to, defensively you've got to you've got to counter that in some way uh, because Navasota's just sitting it, seeing it, sending that drag route, and, and, and Argyle just cannot cover it right now. 13 more yards to Davian Brown. What a 
day he's starting to have. Now, deep to the end zone and beyond the reach of Devon Jernigan. I'm sure right now, and the coaches all know this from Argyle, the players, if they didn't already, and I'm sure it's been preached to them during the week, Brad, are looking at this guy and this guy and now this guy and this guy. Yeah, you know you got a number one guy that's broken national record, but there's three others out there that are pretty good. You better cover them. Second and ten. Rattlers from the Argyle 27. Across the middle. That only works for two yards to Jabrell Lipscomb. And it brings up third down and eight. Corner came off of that uh, pretty pretty well to make the stop again. Look, look, that crossing route is all about catching and yards after the catch. Holding on the offense, number 66, 10 yard penalty. Still second down. Yep, holding called against Navasota. So that one against Chas Cavanaugh. It'll move the Rattlers back 10 yards. Our guy brought a blitz. One of the first times they've really brought a blitz that time, and, and uh, Navasota had to hold on. Big stop here to try to keep them in the third next long. Second down and 20. For Navasota from the Argyle, 37. Lofting it over the middle. And again, it's Blair. Blair up the middle. And it'll be first and goal. Navasota, 32 yards on second and 20. Great job, gets that lineman out there front. He, he was out there pretty quick. I don't know how he got there that fast. The ball was thrown down the field. It's all right, great play, great effort. First down and goal, Navasota at the Argyle 7. Option toss, turn in the corner, Jefferson. A little bit shy of the goal line. Wrapped up by Hunter Marquardt. Marcus Jefferson almost got it into the end zone. Got around Hudson's speed, and then Marquardt wrapped him up. Jefferson gets a lot of benefit from those receivers. You get wore out by them, all of a sudden he's got that. Second down and goal from the one. See Shelton Epler looking to the sideline for the play call. Has it now. And it's Epler himself for the touchdown. Shelton Epler, his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. He's used to throwing them. It's a second score for Navasota. The Rattlers go up two touchdowns. Yeah, great little option scheme out of the out of the, the gun formation. You just all you do is read that defensive end, let him go. Quarterback takes it right to the end. If he takes the pitch, you're cutting up. If he takes you, you pitch. It's just a, it's a tough scheme to defend, especially when you're playing man-to-man -man on the outside four receivers. Martinez for the extra point. And a 14-0 lead for Navasota early in the second quarter of the 4 -8. Division one state championship, Shelton Epler and the Rattlers lead. Fourteen nothing now for the Rattlers. Shelton Epler a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. They had a 94-yard four-play drive. This one, at least by Navasota standards, maybe a little more pedestrian. It's 75 yards and eight plays. The kickoff. From Martinez. And Mark Hart from the 20 yard line. Nice return by Mark Hart. Took a pop, but Argyle is going to have a good field position beginning this drive, pending the result of a flag that has been thrown. Opposite side. On the kick. Offsides. On the kicking team. Five yards will be added to the end of the run. First down, it's even better field position for the Eagles now. Five yards headed, Lee Fedor. Hearing the explanation for the call. Argyle needs, Argyle needs to really come alive here. They, they need to get the ball, take, keep some possession time, and get a point on the board. They ran the ball pretty effectively with Nick Austin. 
before the drive stalled last time out. This time, speed sweet to Drew Estrada. Estrada around the corner on first down. Jabril Hunter can wrap him up. Nice pickup, eight yards. That's that, They're going to have to mix it up. I think you're going to have to see some things uh, from Argyle that they're not used to doing. After the game of eight, and second down and two for the Eagles. Argyle now in Navasota territory again as they were last drive. Nick Roskin will have the yardage for the first down. Let's go to our Brooke Bentley who has a very special guest. That's right. I'm here with the legendary coach Gene Stallings. Coach, you've coached at the highest of levels in the biggest of games. But you, do you get nervous watching your grandson out there? I am, but I'm excited. And, uh, you know, they're not doing too well right now. Navasota's playing extremely well. Uh, but they've done well to get to this point. So, yeah, I'm thoroughly enjoying this game. Your grandson, J.C. Chalk, what, if it, what kind of advice have you given him throughout his career? Well, about the only thing I ask him to do, I don't try to coach him at all. I just try to encourage him to play hard. You know, the coaches have done an outstanding job with him, and, and as long as he plays hard and, and feels like he's making a contribution, well, that's good enough for me, really. Now, life's still good for you in Paris? Said again. Life's still good for you in Paris, Texas? Oh, yes, I live on a ranch, and I'm on the go quite a bit. And going to be uh, going to the championship game in New Orleans, and uh, then I'll hopefully uh, if Alabama's in this game, well, I'll beat that one also. Well, Coach, pleasure talking to you. Enjoy the rest of the game. I appreciate it, and you do a good job, hon. Thank you. Greg, back to you. Thank you, Brooke. Here's Dick Ross to inside the 10. After the pass to Drew Estrada, went for 30 yards. On first down, Ralston picks up four more. And now Argyle has that balance and run pass, getting the effective runs and coming back with a couple of big hitting passes. They will. They really do. And, you know, Cooper did a good job getting that ball to Estrada as a tight window, but he got it in there. So they needed a big play to kind of get some emotion going. Second down at five, the ball inside the Navasota 10 yard line at the nine. It's Ralston again. And Ralston close to, but maybe a little bit shy of the first down. Jonathan Forrest the tackle. You heard Brooke Bentley's conversation with the legendary coach Gene Stallings. It is the junior tight end, J.C. Chalk, who already has caught a pass today, who is Coach Stallings' grandson. Yeah, I think Coach Stallings has been at most of the games. You know, he showed up at a, at a lot of stadiums, so it's been fun for people to get to see him and, and what he's done in his career. Third down and two for the Eagles. It's Ralston to the end zone, and he bulldozes his way in to get Argyle on the board. Again, had an opportunity to kind of maneuver and miss that guy, but he, he'd rather just run over him. So Nick Ralston has done a great job all year long. And again, you know, in the fourth quarter, that's going to wear on secondary people a lot. Ralston in for the touchdown. Argyle right back in it for the extra point. Caitlin Holt out of the hole to Cooper Rogers. You know, I, I, I saw a stat last week during the Graham game. Nick had carried the ball 337 times, and one of the things they said last week in the in the broadcast was he said he hasn't had a fumble. So, he, so he's, he's carried like that, been the load, and has not lost the ball yet. Argyle right back in this one. The UIL Texas State High School Football Championships are brought to you by State Farm. Visit texas.statefarm.com to get to a better state. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. The guy who's been a man all season long for Argyle, Nick Ross, coming through again, over for the touchdown. A little bit winded, and you would be too if you put up those kind of numbers, not only this season, but throughout your career, Brad. You really would. You know, we look at 6,000, almost 2,700 yards this, this season. A so little oxygen is in use because if they're going to win this ball game tonight, he's going to have to carry them all night. Kickoff. That kick from Ryan Slater and Nick. 
Gurkha on the return. Now near the 30-yard line. Navasota's offense will go back to work. It. So the task now falls to the Argyle defense. They give it up touchdowns on back-to-back drives by the Raptors. Yeah, they need something good to happen. They've had a couple of tip balls and had an opportunity, but uh, you know they've got to keep bringing pressure. I know that's a big uh, uh, gamble on their part, but they cannot let Epler stand back there and fire at these receivers. So from the 28-yard line, the Rattlers back to work. Jefferson in the backfield. Epler with a four wide out set. Immediately going to Trent Davian Dixon. Dixon with a gain of about four. Zach Zembrowski wrapping him up. If you look at this defense right here, Craig, you know, you're going to see what these guys are doing as they sit there in man to man. And it's really putting Estrada out there in no man's land number two. He's lined up in the middle of the field. Well, who does he help? You know, he's going he's gonna to lean towards number two. Where does he go? When you get pressure like that, it helps out an awful lot. Hudson Speed, his second sack of this first half. Okay, as you look at all, as you look at we're manned up, manned up, manned up with one backer. Estrada has got to try to play whichever way he knows he's got to play towards Dickinson some, but he's still got to honor the middle of the field. So it's really, it's really a... Who are you going to cover? And now you got to get pressure in order to not let him just throw strikes. The sack brings up third down and 13 for Navasota. Epler to the air and caught. Trent Davian Dixon, third and 13, and the Rattlers pick up 22 before Zach Zabrowski can wrap up Dixon. You know, Zach's had three, three uh, attacks at him tonight. They've all been deep. So now they come back run a little stop route. Zach's with him, uh, doing a great job blanketing, but it's going to be tough. At the 48. Hepler. The pressure coming. Walks it downfield incomplete. Gurkha, nearest man to the football, but pressure was coming on Shelton Epler, and he got rid of the ball. I think Epler thought that that, uh, that route was going to get broke underneath that uh, that DB, and he carried it a little bit to, a little bit further. I think that, that Gurkha was supposed to break underneath that when he threw it. Second down and ten for Navaso. <laughs> Epler dumping it incomplete. Boy, did he have Sandy Blair wide open as he's hit it two or three times, but Hudson speed was again bringing the pressure on Shelton Epler. Hudson Speed, the junior defensive end, having a solid first half. Yeah, he needs to, because again, that, that, that drag concept, that what we call shallow uh, concept, is it's, it's really there. So if they don't get pressure on Epley, he, he, Epler, he's going to have that opportunity to hit that shallow route uh, a whole lot tonight. So, so great job coming back with the pressure. Tonight on Fox Sports Live, they've got all the news for the world of sports, including highlights of a full day in the NBA and the NHL. Fox Sports Live tonight on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I-31 to go on the half and out of the timeout. It'll be third down and 10 for Navasota. Earlier on this march, it was a third and 13. And Epler found Dixon for 23 yards. Now it's third and 10. Epler under pressure. A flag goes down, and so too does Shelton Epler. Wrapped up by Taylor Sweat and Jacob Four. A loss of eight. And a flag coming down as well. Defensive scheme change there. They went to, you know, two over. So they had holding. Number 58 on the offense. A penalty is declined. The result of the play is a fourth down. Argyle got the stop. It needed. It did. It pulled two safeties out. Still went man underneath, but had covered two free on the on the top of it, and it just kind of confused Epler. Little change up defensively that, that did a great job. Rattlers will have to punt. Ryan Perry, who has punted one time here in the first half. There's the kick from the left footer. Fielded by McCook. And then wrapped up after that line drive 
caught at 33 yards. Well, this is a busy time of year for state championships. It's also a busy time of year for the Rogers family. And Todd Rogers having to give away his dog. <laughs> you know, coaches are people too. Uh, Coach Roger coached last week in uh, in that semifinal game on Friday nights against against Graham, and then his daughter Emily got married uh, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, so you know, again, one of the things is, is for for a coach like Coach Rogers, got an incredible staff, is the fact that he he can leave, he can go be a be a person, and he's got a staff that's going to take care of him. And his daughter marrying one of his former players. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> uh, coaches in Bridgeport now, and, and, and uh, Todd coached him exactly right, so he knows a little about him. From the 31 for the Eagles, back to the ground to Ralston. Ralston surging through for a gain of nearly nine yards, close to the 40-yard line. Marquez burned the tackle for the Rattlers. Feel a little change in momentum here. Argyle's kind of getting control of the game with their with their ground game and occasional throw that uh, that's got them some great yardage, but uh, they're, they're kind of wearing down this Navasota defense right now in the second quarter. After the pickup of nine yards, Ralston again, and a first down. Taken for four more up to the 43-yard line. Well, Brad, you talked about how it wears down the defense, and Argyle would love to be able to take this all the way down the field get it in just before the half to tie the score, and Argyle's getting the football to start the third quarter. You know, one of the things I really love about Nick Ross, I noticed this last year as well, is he, he is a north and south runner. You don't see Nick bounce very much. He's going to stick that left foot and get up in that line of scrimmage, and if he gets four, he gets four, but he's going to get you positive yardage. Already 85 yards here in the first half, and he'll add some to it. You can see that play right there. A lot of, a lot of backs want to bounce that. They want. They, there's not much there. They want to bounce it out left. There's a defensive end sitting there, and it's a big mistake. Ralston is a great runner. He's going to kick that back up inside, get three to four, and live to, live to run again. Averaging very close to five yards per carry here in the first half. Four yards on first down there, and it's second and six for the Eagles from the Argyle 48. Rogers looking to throw this time, and finding Estrada, but it's short hop as Drew Estrada went to catch it, but it short hopped incomplete for the junior Drew Estrada. I, bl I believe he well, they're going to give it. They're gonna... I think they said his knee was down, so he couldn't advance. Right, and that's exactly what it was. Knee down, that's why the whistle sounded immediately, but the catch ruled, and here's a, an even better look at it. Great job going down, catching the ball with both hands, knee down. Great first down. Move of the chains and down to the 39. Ralston with a blocker in front, and here he goes. Just bouncing off tacklers. Argyle has the, the kind of quickness up front with their guards that they can get them both out there in front. They're big kids. You know, they're, they're, they're 250 kind of kids, but they've got great feet, can get outside. You watch them pull, and here they come down the line of scrimmage. 79's out in front, get a block. Ralston needs that, and he's very patient. He waits on him. Now, yeah, Trey Smith, uh, Ty Smith did, just did a great job. Uh, so Ralston is running behind his guys really well right now. Junior right tackle leading the way now. Second down and six for the 35. Rodgers to the air. Caught right at the marker by J.C. Chalk. A tight end with the grab. A gain of five. Leaves Argyle needing a yard for the first down. As the clock moves toward two minutes remaining, it'll stop it. And it is enough for the first down. Spotted there, enough for the first down. Clock stops as they move would, the chains. Would you say that Chalk has some pedigree? <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about that. Ross, at that time, knocked off his pins. Christian Jones, a junior defensive tackle, dropping Ross for a loss of four. Jones does, Jones does a great job. You see his guard that he's lined up over pulls, and he read that and stepped with him. Uh, great, great job just reading a pulling guard and getting, getting yourself in the backfield for a loss. Inside two minutes remaining in the half. Argyle with two timeouts remaining. And before they get going, Navasota will spend one on defense. 
Now, Minnesota down to one timeout. Argyle has two. Minute 47 to go till halftime. And coming up, the Ford Halftime Show. Rick Renner, Greg Temper, Ken Purcell, the coach. Emotional win this afternoon and a great comfort behind win if you didn't catch it earlier today with Gilmer rallying from down 19 nothing and down 25 7 and a half to beat West Orange Star. And the pep rally at Innis down in Ellis County as they get ready for the 5A Division II state championship game tonight against Cedar Park. It's all coming up on the Ford halftime show. And conversation going on right now. Hunter Marquardt there talk about. I want to go back to the conversation because nobody in this building, I think, can speak better to the subject than you, Brad McCoy, about father-son when the son is the quarterback. You went through it twice. You had two sons, quarterback teams, to the state championship game. And we were joking with Todd Rogers in the week and I asked him about how much of that conversation goes on at the uh, at the dinner table, and they said, "Now we don't. We try not to let too much of that interfere." He said, "Mom kind of gets in the way." <laughs> That's of that. it. Mom is the barometer. She kind of, she kind of, you know, when it's over, it's over. So she'll let you know. But there he is. It's, it's impossible not to take it home sometimes. It is now second down at 14. Roston, and again, Navasota Reddy Roston continued to keep the legs moving, but the Rattler defense equal to the task. Austin Coog, D.J. Harris, the tackle. Gain of two, and an important third down coming up. Third down for the Eagles, needing nearly 13 yards. He's going to keep churning. Good thing they had some reinforcements. Big play here. On third down. Pretty close to 13 yards needed for the first. Rodgers got him. Wide open. The catch. And it's J.C. Chalk once again, the tight end, as he takes it down to the 15-yard line, a gain of 16 yards and a first down. Great concept there by Argyle. Hit Chalk out in the, kind of in the, as a slot underneath, uh, and then got him out of coverage. Great, great scheme. Chalk this season with a total of 29 catches and six touchdowns coming in big afternoon today so far for J.C. Chong. Keeps the drive going for Argyle. Now it's Estrada. Speed sweep. Navasota ready, however. Estrada dropped for no gain as the clock rolls inside of one minute remaining in the half. Yeah, it missed a couple of blocks there. Estrada was being very patient. You know, <laughs> you look at Ralston. He's been carrying the ball really well. He couldn't figure out who he wanted to block that time. Uh, Estrada's like, hey now, let's go. Somebody get that guy. Second and 10 for the 15. Now it's to Roston. Roston in for the score. Touchdown number two for Nick Roston. And Argyle going for the equalizer here. Again, you watch that cornerback come up. He's been run over twice tonight by Roston in the secondary. He's not sure he wants to, what he wants to do right now. Uh, so, you know, you're trying to tackle but from behind, grab air, and, and uh, so Ralston in his demeanor of running all night is, is already wearing those guys down to how they want to tackle him. For the conversion, Caleb Holt. Holt this season has been perfect. An extra points is so there. And now with 34 seconds remaining in the half, game tied at 14, and a reminder, Argyle gets the football to start the second half. And Ralston carries it into the end zone. Brad, you go back to the importance of the stop defensively that Argyle was able to get on the last Navasota possession, setting the Eagles up to where they could drive down for the tie touchdown. Yeah, look at these guys. Look, look, look at them really, really hooked up right here. They're just really coming back inside. He's able to get a block. Chalk is blocking on the outside. I mean, so everybody's really hitting at full stride and can, and can stay with their blocks. And not just hitting, but they're staying and driving, which gives Rawson an opportunity to really find the holes he wants to stick up in. Now, we'll find out certainly more from Brooke Bentley coming up the half. But uh, Nick Rawson went straight to the locker room after the touchdown. 
I can tell you that's probably 34 seconds go in, get you a little oxygen, get you some water, and we'll be we'll all be in there in a minute. Just give him because he is their horse, and they've got to ride him all night long. So let's get him in, let's get him set down, get him cooled off, get him some water, and uh, I, I don't think anything's wrong with him. That's just we're going to take care of him. Well, in the first half, Nick Ross did 22 carries for 107 yards and the two. Eagle touchdown. That's a full ball, ball game for most running back. Sammy Blair. Across the 30 on the return. Down to 27 seconds remaining in the half. So we'll see if Navasota tries to strike quickly before the half is done. Or get to the locker room. They have one timeout remaining. Rattlers will spread the field. Epler. And might have been a timeout call by Argyle before the snap. Todd Rogers went walking over to the officials right before them. Move the clock back to 27 seconds. Here's the explanation. Yeah, please put the game block 25. Block 25. We're starting on the red. So it's at 25. So defensively, you can see Argyle is, is back. They're not going into a full prevent. They want. They don't want to give uh, Navasota a chance to throw it under on those drag routes. But they do have two two safeties now, uh, and only four up on the front line of scrimmage. Play clock running now. Will we'll clock at 27 prior to this first down snap and pass to Blair. Sandy Blair upfield. Navasota will use the timeout or hurry the line of scrimmage. As that one picked up 14 yards in a first down. Now the clock moving. Epler. A shotgun and looking to go to the air again. Side caught and out of bounds. Is Jabrell Lipscomb with seven seconds remaining in the half. A gain of eight. Now they've got an opportunity now, a 45-yard ball. They're probably getting trips or, or twins and probably going to take one shot to the end zone. Epler's got the arm to get it there on a Hail Mary type if they can get the perfection. We saw one last night. Cameron Yo against Mediola. A Hail Mary pass from the final play of the half and went for a touchdown. Looking left and right. This is going to end the first half as Blair stepped out of bounds in the final play of the first half. So, as advertised, Navasota throws the ball. As advertised, Argyle and Nick Rostick running the ball. And as advertised, one versus two is a very good football game. All tied up at the end of the first half of the 4A Division I State Football Championship. It's a 14-14 ball game. Navasota and Argyle heading to the locker room. A big first half. Navasota with the first two touchdowns. Argyle coming back with two touchdowns. The game is tied as we go down to the sidelines. Brooke Bentley with Rattlers head coach Lee Fedora. Coach, Nick Ralston with over 100 rushing yards in the first half. Was he starting to wear down your defense? Yeah, we knew all along that's what they're going to do. They're going. That's his, That's their bell cow. They're going to hand it to him. We just got to keep tackling low and, and get him to the ground and try to get him to them third long situations. Your offense feeling some pressure in the second quarter. What adjustments do they need to make? Yeah, I don't, you know, the main thing is I, I don't think we're hitting our quick read that we need to be hitting. And, um, you know, they're playing that man cover, so we got to throw the ball around. We just got to see our reads quick and get it to them. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. We'll be back with more the Ford Championship live show after this break. Navasota striding back onto the field. The number one team in the state. Deadlocked with the number two team in Texas. The Argyle Eagles. First half of this one started off. Brad McCoy so Navasota would have things its own way because the Rattlers had Shelton Epler going to the air. Absolutely. And we knew this was going to happen. And kind of the theme of the night was a little shallow route, crossing routes. 
Uh, Argyle playing man to man with a safety over all night long, so Epson was able to hit those crossing routes and then, and then come up big uh, to Dickinson at one time. And, and obviously opened up some running lanes for him. Meanwhile, Nick Ross started to turn the tide for Argyle in the second quarter. Yeah, we knew it was going to be big uh, Ross tonight. That's their best, their money guy, the bread and butter. But you know, I'm telling you right now, uh, 22 carries for 111 yards and a touchdown. He's uh, he went in early to get him a little oxygen and maybe an IV. We don't know, but he's going to have to continue that. Well, look at the Ford first half numbers, and there's the disparity: the rushing yards, the passing yards. Tells you quite a bit about this. Absolutely, you know, we knew what these two teams were going to do when they came in here, and they're staying true to form. So we get ready to start the second half. It's Navasota kicking off to Argyle. So the Eagles will get the football to start this third quarter. And this one will drive out of the back of the end So Now let's go down the sideline and check in with Brooke Bentley with head coach Todd Rogers of Argyle. Coach, Nick Ralston with two rushing touchdowns in the second quarter. How was your offense able to open things up for him? Well, we off to a little bit of slow start offensively. Uh, we charged changing our blocking schemes and, and uh, had some very effective drives there. The penalty hurt us uh, defensively the first half, but I think we've got all that corrected and, and uh, we're ready for 24 minutes. It's back to 0-0. Zero, zero. Coach, your team with the momentum going into the half, what was your message to them? Uh, hold steady. Hold steady. We've got a good plan. Let's just stick to the plan, and let's see what the next 24 minutes has in store. Thanks, Coach. Craig, back up to you. Brooke, thank you very much. And here's the plan of attack. It's to give the ball to Nick Roston. And on first and 10, Roston picks up two yards. One of the adjustments you can see right right away with uh, with Navasota is they've, they've moved their ends down. Look like they're a little more inside responsibility trying to make Ralston bounce as opposed to getting that head downfield. Uh, so I think we're going to see a little bit tighter inside than trying to get him to corral the outside. Second down and eight. Ralston pounding forward for three more to the 30 yard line. William Hoff. Frankie DeLeon on the tackle. Third down and five coming up for Argyle in the first half. Brad, the Eagles struggled early on third downs and then converted a couple late. They wound up two out of six in that department. Right, some of their big plays were, were on second down, but they went long, so they kind of skipped right over the third down. Third and five now for the 30. Cooper Rogers to throw, but being pressured and dropped. My goodness, what an open field hit by Coy Imhoff to drop him. It's a one-yard gain, and it will be three and out for Argyle. Yeah, that's a great defensive play coming up from secondary, and it didn't didn't take much fake from Cooper, and uh, really really squared up to him, made a great open field tackle. So it brings up fourth down. Argyle will have to punt the football. Through Estrada. That's not the way they wanted to start this half, I'm sure. No, we also had a flag down. Holding number four on the defense on an eligible receiver. The ball was not thrown, so it's a 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. Wow, that's big, and it. Correction, it was enough for a first down. There'll be a first down. It was because it was third down and five, and so it's a first down. That's a big penalty there. Argyle looked to have been forced to a three and out, and now the Eagles. Keep possession of the ball. I believe that's probably the biggest penalty of the game thus far. Speed sweep to Estrada. A spin move inside, but still only able to pick up four yards. Before Frankie DeLeon wraps him up. Great look at Navasota's speed right there. This is a game of speed, and I'm telling you, that jet sweep came through, and the secondary linebackers were, were on it. There weren't enough people to block, so Navasota is doing a great job running the football. Probably going to see a little deceptiveness here from Argyle before long. Second down at six from the 44. Back to the ground to Roston. Nick Roston pops for two yards. He made a great point in the first half, Brad, when he said, that kind of running will eventually wear a defense down. I imagine Rawson's taking quite a pounding, too, as we mentioned. He went to the locker room a little bit early near the end of the half. 
Yeah, yeah he, he really has. I'm sure they got him, got him some oxygen and took care of him because they know he carried the ball 22 times in the first half, and he may have to carry it 22 months more. Uh, so they've got to take care of him and get him ready. But uh, obviously, Navasota has, has dialed up some things that I'm not sure that I'm not sure they don't have a spy on him right now. We'll see on some of the misdirection. Back in the third down department for Argonne. Third and four. It's Ralston. And not enough. Got to extend the ball forward, but it's going to be probably three yards shy on the line of the game, which is midfield. They need to be right in the middle of the big blue star. And they're three yards short. And Navasota, after giving up a first down on the penalty, Brad, regrouped and then went three and out against Argonne, forced the Eagles to punt. Yeah, they did. And Coach Rogers went a little conservative there with, with Ralston. Could have probably benefited from a little play action. Here's the fourth down and the punt to come. Estrada, that rugby kick. Trendavian Dixon allows it to bounce, and it'll be spotted right around the 11 or 12 yard line. We mentioned Cedar Park arriving at AT&T Stadium in Arlington for tonight's 5A Division II State Championship. So, too, have the Ennis Lions. Two teams that turned around their seasons after some early stumbles against good competition as well. And they'll be playing coming up at 8 o'clock in the 5A Division II final. You know, you, you look at teams coming in late, you know, how we have to prepare for three games here. It could be a, could be a late start, so you really got to be spontaneous. Here's Dixon, or rather Hepler, looking downfield. And Blair with a catch. My goodness, what a catch by Sammy Blair. Looked up right there in his hands. Colton Liggett made the tackle. Watch this catch, a tremendous catch by Blair. Yeah, it's a, it's a great catch and a great throw. Epler put it right over the defensive back. He saw the defense running with no eyes. He was able to throw it right over the top of his helmet. Great, great catch. Super concentration. And on that play, a gain of 25 yards to the air again. And that one, Fox skipped off the turf, but Hunter Marquardt may have come up with an interception. I believe they're going to call it an interception. We have no review, so if they do, it's it. It's there. Now, the line judge, I think, is going up to say it did. He was looking at it, I believe, from the same, same angle we were. And... Pass is ruled incomplete. Ball touched the ground. Look at that. It definitely did hit the ground. You see it there on the replay. So it'll be second down. Argonne fans <laughs> hooting and hollering, but it, it, it did hit the turf. Yeah, they want to throw that red flag. We don't have a challenge flag. No challenge. <laughs> it's a good and thing no they replay. lost it. Great effort, though. Second down to 10. Screen set up. And Blair once more. Boy, is Sammy Blair having himself a game catch in the football. Jacob Ford, the tackle we talked about, Trendavian Dixon, and of course he has a touchdown grab, but Sammy Blair is the leading pass catcher for the Rattlers. Brad, six catches for a seven now for 139 yards. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Most of them have been on crossing routes and shallow routes, but a little screen to him there. All right, again, they're going to rock you to sleep with, with Blair, 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 and all of a sudden Dixon's going to run by you. The safety's really, Estrada's really in a bind. First and ten. From the 49 and movement before it gets going, and this is going to be a false start against the Raptors. False start, number three on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still Lipscomb moving a little too quickly. And it becomes first down at 15. A little communication issues, because when you don't huddle, you've got to really be aware of the communication. Watch the ball. This lineman really got to go on the movement of the ball. Now for the 44. On first and 15. That look, the pressure coming and still on courts it deep, but cannot get it to Lipscomb. We've seen Argyle get more pressure on Shelton Epler as this game has progressed. You see a little, you see a little twist stunt there off the defensive line. Uh, Epler had to get rid of it a little quicker. One of the first stunts you've seen is you didn't put much a bull rush across the map. Had a little twist stunt there off the defensive line. Second down at 15 for the Rattlers. 
Epler again hit hard, but there's Blair once more for a catch. What a throw. And Epler's down. Took a huge shot. Great blitz. Taylor Sweat really came on the blitz. Legal hit, but really put a, put a shot on Blair. I mean, on uh, Epler. Yeah, he's up, but he's going to have to, I think, go to the sidelines as, as the officials have stopped play. And how about the catch from Sammy Blair for 27 yards? Great catch, but I'm telling you, I can't uh, say enough about Epler's accuracy through duress. Officials time out for an injury. Officials time out for an injury. And he, 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 he stepped in and threw that ball on the money at about 25, knowing he's going to get hit. I mean, that's a sign of a great disciplined quarterback. He's able to step up, deliver the ball, and deliver a strike for a huge first down. Brad, is that also just him trying to get his win back from where he took that shot? Probably so. Yeah, he took it right there in that die frame. So he probably, and that's a hard thing. You, you know, when you get the air knocked out of you, you feel like you're going to die out there before you can catch a breath. 29 yards to Sammy Blair, who now has eight catches for 168 yards. From the 27, and the backup quarterback on the carry because Epler has to come out for at least one play. It's Karon Baker who came in. Kadarius' younger brother, who was right. a big part of that state championship two years ago. And Karon Baker. Came in for one play and managed to pick up a yard. And now Epler's back on the field. Second down. So it was second and nine. The ball at the 26. Epler up the sideline and incomplete as he was looking for Rodavian Brown. Yeah, another again it just shows the toughness of Epler here. Just as you as you look at this blitz coming off and, and as Sweat gets to him, really you know, and, and it's a it's a legal hit, stayed off the head. Just a really hard football play, but I'm just so impressed with Epler and his accuracy under under stressful situations. Do a great strike. Third down and nine for Epler and Navasota at the Argyle 26. Epler looking for Dixon. Did he catch that? Isn't that about where uh, the New York Giants did that the other night? Is that where Beckham had his one hand right there? I think you're exactly right. Here's another look. What a spot. I believe that's exactly the corner where Beckham one-handed the other night. It's been an ESPN highlight. What a, what a catch. Wow. Amazing. That one's good. A tremendous grab by Tredavian Dixon. You may see that on Fox Sports 1 later tonight. <laughs> yeah, you better. Right now, a special message from Dairy Queen. For the spectacular. And holds in his second touchdown catch. I can look at this so many different ways, Brad. It's impressive. It really is. And, it, and it's not like he wasn't covered. He's, it, it, Epler's throwing that into double coverage, but he trusts his receiver enough to go get the football. Zabraski and Dane Ledford both bracketed him, and then he finds a way to gain control with the right hand, juggle it, and then pull it in for the score. Yeah, it's just great balance, body control. That's that's why he's who he is. And, uh, you know, with one hand, calls it into two. So just a great talent. Well, Trendavian Dixon with his 37th touchdown catch of the year. That's a national record. But the pass from Epler, his 69th touchdown pass of the season, that is a national record. As well, he passes Travis Quintanilla of Refurio for the all-time single-season touchdown passing mark. Well, you, that's uh, pretty special. You don't see that very often. And for all of that, it's a one-score game. <laughs> and Argyle's about to get the football back. Yeah. Part of what we thought would be the special quality of this matchup between numbers one and two in Texas. Right, Nick Ralston saying, get me the ball, let me show you. Kick off to Gage McCook. McCook! Excellent move, it's upfield. An excellent field position as a result for Argyle off a 38-yard kickoff return by McCook. 
Great job by McCook there. You know, little scat back, and you know, he's uh, also a quarterback. And we, we like I said, we play him in the in the Wildcat sometimes, but plays that slot receiver. Great speed, uh, great feet. He's a good run back here. Well, here comes that man. drags people with him. You know, Argyle just needs to be really careful now not to get out of the game plan. Don't be, don't panic. Don't think you got to go score too fast. Stay with what you do, and, and that's Ralston and a little play action. Uh, don't make a big mistake of trying to go downfield and match uh, just what Navasota did. Ralston's knee ruled to have touched down at the 47, so it's a five-yard game, and it's second down and five for Argyle. Rodgers to throw this time. Out once more for the tight end. J.C. Chalk works for seven yards. Chalk this evening is Argyle's leading receiver. That's his fourth catch of the evening now. And they've all been big catches, third, second and third downs. Uh, he's done a great job getting open. Cooper's done a great job getting in the ball. A first down, a move of the chains, the ball at the Navasota 41. Rodgers, the toss to Ralston this time. And inside, then outside, and gained six yards. He won. Second down, and a nice bit of running here started inside, and then he, he did show a little shiftiness to get outside. He did, and if you watch him run, his center of gravity stays so low. He doesn't run tall. It's almost like he runs in a crouched position. You know, as, as he makes his cut, he's down low. He's always two feet on the ground. We talked earlier in the last game about people that are trying to hur hurdle feet. You're not going to see that from Ralston. He's going to have feet on the ground. On second down and four, Ralston again spins forward for a couple more. So the 33 and now third down and two at the Rattler 33-yard line. You know, no hurry here. I like the poise of this team right now. They're not really, they're not huddling, but they're not in a hurry. On third and two, lost of the toss. Turns the play in the alley and has the first down inside the 30. Down to the 28 yard line, a pickup of five more. Just intelligent running. Once again, a lot of backs would be tempted to bounce that outside into that pressure. Uh, he sticks his left foot in the ground and uh, knows he's got to get three yards. And then he ends up getting five or six. So see him breathing <laughs> a little harder, but he just continues to pound the head. He's going to get stronger as the day goes on. At the 28 yard line. Once more, it's lost again. Losing his way forward. Inside the 22, DJ Harris, the tackle. For a gain of 6 4, nearly 7 on the play, and it's second down and short. Rawson reminds me a whole lot of Toby Gerhardt. Uh, when he was running at Stanford, he's low to the ground. He's going to punish you. He's got speed. Hold on to the football. And you might, you know, Toby carry the ball 40 times without a breath even as well. And then go out and play left field for you. Exactly. It's good outfield. Exactly. Play baseball at Stanford as well. Second down and four. There you go. Back the other way. Once more to Ralston. Down to the 10-yard line is Ralston for 12 more yards. Ralston over 150 rushing yards now, and it'll be first and goal for Argyle. Again, misdirection, look at that, the little sprint out, sprint draw look, put that guard back in front of him, and uh, have him a little room to negotiate a, a move without just running over somebody. First and goal, the Eagles at the Navasota 10. Once more to Ralston, this time, are the Rattlers ready? They hold him to a gain of two. I'm not sure. Have we had one play in this drive that hadn't gone to Ralston? No, we had the one pass to Chalk. Other than that, it's all it. Nick Ralston. 
his, his inspiration right now is to go score right now. That way he can go rest a little bit. Second goal from the eight. Guess who? Ross to try to pick his way forward, but only a yard to the seven. Brought down by Dominique Mallard and Cameron Gray. Now it's third and goal at the seven. Yeah, I think they're in two, two down territory here. I know they've got a good kicker, but I, I think what they think in their mind is that if Rawson can't get six yards in two plays, then they may not need to win. We'll see. But Rawson is a little winded at this point. Third down and goal at the Navasota seven yard line. Going to watch Gage from Cook here. A little play action, and he's at the slot by himself. A little timeout first. So the Eagles call their first time out of this third quarter. On the move, but down seven here. 2.04 remaining in the third quarter and a 21 to 14 Navasota lead. Yeah, you know what this timeout tells me, Craig? That it's gonna it's gonna continue to be Ralston time. We'll find out. 21-14, Navasota the lead. Third and goal, officially the six-yard line. And the ninth play of the drive coming up for Argyle. Seven of the eight prior plays have been Nick Rawson. Any reason to believe this play won't? Not at all, especially after a timeout to get him, you know, a couple of minutes of rest. I think you're going to see two consecutive Rawson runs here. Third down and goal for the Eagles. Rodgers, the toss to Rawson. The alley, the corner, and short of the goal line. Bird and Soto the tackle. It's fourth and goal at the one yard line. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, he got five, and I think in their mind they're saying, well, I don't know, looks like they may be bringing the field goal team in. Well, they were for a moment, but now Caleb Holt is going back off the field. Ralston's off the field as well. There they go. Going off the field, and Drew Estrada has come on. Now, Todd Rogers told us, he said, Holt will kick, but also Estrada can do it. Yep. And here's Estrada to try an 18-yard field goal. It's a fake. Estrada to the goal line. He's close. He's in. He's in. <laughs> well, that's fun. You know, you know by, by calling the timeout and running Rawson the first time, you have to think they're not looking at field goal. What a great ploy to take Ralston off the field because nobody expected that. If you're going to take Ralston off, you go for it. But Estrada's a great athlete, too. Great second effort to get in the end zone. Only the second play out of 10 in the drive that did not go to Nick Ralston. For the tying extra point now, Caleb Holt puts it through. And it's 21-21. That's just about as, as just block it up, let your in, let your backsides go wide, and he almost got caught. But interior, just dig it out. Nice job by the offense. Nice call. Little little uh, deceptiveness from Coach Rogers with uh, with Ralston off the field. So uh, applause to that. Officially, 52 yards in 11 plays. That took 4:49 off the clock. You know, this game is going to turn into a thinking game here. You know, you've got great athletes on both sides, but, you know, Argyle is a, is a you know, playing the smart percentages, if you will. And, and they understand what their kids need to do. They've got to hold on and hopefully get to the fourth quarter and be close. In fact, you know, I know you've seen this stat. Um, as far as the academic All-State is, is, is concerned, it came out last week, and I believe that uh, we'll probably have a, have a graphic here somewhere. Heavily populated Absolutely. by Argyle Eagles. We'll show you in a moment. Here's a kickoff, and it is short. Fielded by Blair at the 20. And Sandy Blair has had a big night catch in the football returns it over the 30. Brad McCoy mentioned it. This is it, the Texas High School Coaches Association's academic all-state team. And look at all of those Argyle Eagles on it. Now, Ten of them. That, that's, that's a big group. And, and, and uh, Coach 
Rogers' son, Cooper Rogers, made the elite team. There's first and second team, and then there's an elite, elite team, and Cooper was on the elite team, which is very few to, to, to make that level. If you're the coach's kid, you better, right? You better be. It just shows that, you know, why he's running the ship pretty well. From the 32-yard line of Navasota, Rattlers now have the offense back on the field, and Epler ready to go back to work. Got him deep and just out of the reach. As he tried to connect one more time with Sammy Blair. Blair and eight catches for 168 yards tonight. Again, that's that that single high safety is really having to shade over to help out with Dickinson. And uh, Epper's doing a good job looking him off with his eyes and, and going to another direction. In this case, the linebacker Liggett dropping back in pass coverage, but the receiver screen set up to Dixon. There you go. They get Dixon lost the football at the 35, and Argyle has it. Shane McKinney, the recovery for the Eagles. That's a, that's unfortunate there for, for, uh, for Dixon. You know, he obviously feels more comfortable down the field, that little tunnel screen that they probably run it a lot, but uh, well, those Argyle kids are running into the football really well and they just got a hand in there and lost it. Dixon was spinning around with the ball was pulled out. And Argyle will have the football at the 35-yard line. And now that somewhat winded Navasota defense has to go back onto the field. Yeah, they had they had 13 plays of, and most of it from uh, from this guy right here. Lost it. This time Rattler's ready for him. And they stop him for a yard loss. DJ Harris, Cameron Gray the tackle for Navasota. One of the things we're seeing right now is that the, the defensive line and linebackers are doing a pretty good job on Ralston. He hasn't got into the secondary quite as much. Now, we haven't seen any big plays. It's been four or five yards, three or four yards. So the secondary is not uh, taking those big shots they were in the first half right now. Inside a minute, remaining third quarter. Rodgers. Looking to throw and does downfield too high. He was looking for Estrada. And a couple of Rattlers collided. Jabrell Lipscomb and Nick Gurkha. Yeah, big collision there. You know, I, I love what they're doing, moving the pocket. I, you know, they're taking taking Cooper and cutting the field in half for him. Instead of those deep drops where he's having to read the whole field, they're, they're moving him uh, to one side or the other where he can read half the field. Doing a really good job with that. I like the concept. It is now third down. And 11 for Argyle. Rodgers to the air again. Outside the chalk and tipped away from it. What an excellent job by the man they call the Rattler linebacker, Coy Hoff, kind of that hybrid linebacker safety and he tipped the pass away from J.C. Chalk. Exactly. Some people call it a monster. Some people call it a rover. You know, they're called the Rattler. Uh, but great job. Argyle tried to come back with a little of Navasota, you know, some of their medicine with the crossing, the shallow route, and uh, couldn't get back to it. But Navasota did a super job on a sudden change on the fumble. That's, uh, you know, they had every opportunity to get down, but three great plays and going to force a punt. Or it looks like they may be going for it. Yeah. Offense is on the field. Rodgers from the shotgun. So on fourth and 11, the Eagles go for it. Going deep. Down the field. Caught. Cutter Marquardt. Touchdown, Argyle. On fourth and 11. Wow. I guess Coach Rodgers said, hey, it's the state championship. Let's, let's do what we came here to do. Great read, fourth down, great throw right over the shoulder. Great catch. He did it pretty well there, but just Parker made a great catch. Eagles have their first lead of the ball game. Caleb Holt for the conversion. And it's 28-21 Argyle with barely over half a minute to go in the third quarter. Great, great shot, no pressure so much for me saying that Navasota handled the sudden change like they did. They handled it three plays and assumed they were going to punt, but uh, Argyle decided that's not what we're going to do. 
we can throw it up down there, and if we get an interception on the five, it's as good as a punt. So great gamble, pays off, great throw. You know, Cooper put it on the money. What goes through a coach's mind when you've got fourth down and 11 in a tie ball game in a state championship to decide we'll take a shot like that? Well, it's, it's a really tough decision because if you could punt it inside the 10 of 10, I'm letting you let your defense play. Again, I would throw that kind of pass and throw it up. If, if they do get an interception, it's going to be, even if you get in the end zone, it's on the 20. So it's a, it's a risk that you can take, and sometimes it pays off really big. Certainly did for Todd Rogers and Argyle. Now the Eagles with their first lead of the evening. At 28-21. What a ball game between the top two teams in the state in Class 4A. High short kick, and Dixon settles under the peg to catch at the 20-yard line, and then is knocked down at the 28. So Trendavian Dixon, who's fumbled, set up the Argyle drive for the go-ahead score. Turns that kick and Shelton Eppler and the Rattlers will try to counter it out. I imagine he's telling Coach Fedora right now, Coach, let me have the ball. If you give me the ball, let me make let me make amends for that. And they've got to get back to that. You know, they've got to get back to him on the on the deeper stops down the field. Uh, that, that's why that's why they're here. So they've, they've got to start taking a shot. From the Navaso to 27. Epler under pressure, brought down. Taylor Sweat, the middle linebacker, drops it for a loss of four on what will be the final play of the third quarter. Taylor Sweat with the sack. Navasota had recaptured momentum on the touchdown in the third quarter. Back came Argyle, the long drive, Nick Roston. Most of that drive, the fake field goal for the score, and then on fourth and 11, the touchdown pass to Hunter Marquardt of 36 yards. The Argyle Eagles have a 28-21 lead over the Navasota Rattlers. Fourth quarter of a 4A Division I state championship coming up. In Arlington, Craig Wayne, Brad McCoy, Brooke Bentley, and our Fox Sports Southwest crew. We're having a blast, and pretty much everybody here in the house is as well. 28-21, number two Argyle, leading top-ranked Navasota as we get the fourth quarter of the 4A Division I state championship underway. On second down at 14, Epler flinging it downfield, and that one's almost intercepted. Dixon, the intended target, Zach Zabraski, closed on the ball, was unable to come up with the interception, but now it's third down and 14 for Navasota. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm very impressed with the secondary and the defensive scheme right now. You know, they're not going to get out of this man-to-man. -man. And I remember last year in the champ state championship game, uh, uh, I guess against Fairfield, we asked Coach Rogers, are you going to stay in this man-to-man -man all night? And he said, that's what we do. Third and 14. Over the middle. Drag it across. And picking up it up for the first down is Rodavian Brown. They needed 14. The Rattlers come up with a 15-yard play. And there's that uh, shallow crossing route again. Again, only threw the ball about four or five yards deep, but that run after catch is what gets the first down. But that's the man beater that they're that they're hanging their hat on right now. First and ten from the 39. Here comes Swift. And this time wrapped up by Johnny Alday, the defensive nose tackle. Comes in and drops Sheldon Empler. A loss of 11. A big loss. Let's go down to the silence. Brooke Bentley with a key member of this Navasota Rattler team unable to be on the field performing. Yes, here with Darian Randall. Darian, you tore your ACL at the end of district play. You were the team's leading rusher. I saw you coming out of the tunnel with the team. What are your emotions like here today? My emotions today are they're pretty hitting hard because my senior last time playing state game, I can't play. But mostly my main focus is just on these guys, keeping them strong for the game. Your coach said that you were at team meetings, you've been at games. Why did you want to stay so involved with the team? To let them know that I'm still here for them. You know, I got their back. You know, through the seasons I've been injured, they had my back. So it was a really important thing to stay with them. 
Good luck with the rehab. Greg, back to you. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate that, Brooke. On third down at 17, unable to connect. LaMarcus Jefferson, it's incomplete. There you see Randall Aaron being wheeled out by his teammates. And they need a lift because now they went three and out. And it's fourth down. Actually, they picked up one first down, but now it's fourth down and 17. And the Rattlers will have to punt back to Argyle, trailing by seven points. And what a huge loss he was. As you can see, rushing today, of Navasota is 10, has 10 carries for a minus eight yards. The passing has been there, but they've not been able to get much more on the ground. Spinning around is Gage McCook. A 33-yard punt, no return, and Argyle will begin from its own 35-yard line, holding a seven-point lead. One more game out of this triple header tonight. It's the 5A Division II State Championship, and that will match up the Cedar Park Timberwolves against the Innes Lions, whose head coach, Jack Alvarez, out in the locker room with our Neil Beasley. All right, Coach Alvarez and Ennis, and boy, you guys started 0-2. How do you guys end up in a state championship game? Well, we never quit believing in one another. Kids, class act kids, they play, they, you know, they play hard together. They never quit believing in one another, and uh, here we are. That's what they, that's what they promised. Did you, did you learn an awful lot from those first two games? I mean, how did that work out? Well, I mean, we had some guys, from, you know, possibly in the wrong position, made some moves. You know, when you play good personnel, you play good people, you find out where your weaknesses are, and we were, we, I mean, we're tested. <laughs> How do you stop that Cedar Park team over there? They're awful good themselves. Uh, we're just going to play good, keep tackling. <laughs> Congratulations so far. Good luck, Thanks, sir. All right. All right. Thanks very much, Neil. Jack Alvarez, tremendous job. And in his first down carry for Roston, went for five yards. Nick Roston has carried the ball 37 times tonight for 164 yards, uh, make it 38. He bounces forward for a few more. A couple more for Roston. William Hoff, the tackle. And now third down and short coming up for the Eagles. You know, they just keep pounding the ball. They've got a lead now, which is the way they like to operate. Uh, so you're gonna, you're just gonna see that, that satisfied with three to four yards. They've gone on it for, on fourth down. They're four of five on fourth downs tonight. So uh, you know that they're going to get in that situation. They feel like Ralston can make 10 yards in four carries. Now the nine minutes remaining in the ball game. Third down at three for Argyle. Ralston this time stopped short of the first down. It's a yard shy. Maybe a little under that. Knows the football might be just across the 45-yard line, but it'll bring up fourth down for the Eagles. Christian Jones played nose tackle for, for Navasota. Did a great job that time. Slanted right into the play and, and uh, was able to get Ross in the low. Uh, just wrecked a little havoc there on that play. Count the fake field goal, Brad. Argyle is four out of five on fourth down tonight. Here we go. And here Here's comes the, the six. six. Yeah. The sixth opportunity, trying to convert for the fifth time on fourth down to Ralston. He has it. He's surging forward. So hard to stop that when you know, even though you know it's coming, you need less than yeah, one. Yeah, and you're getting great pushes, you know, down there doing the same. You know, Ty Smith, we talked about him already there tonight, but he and his his uh, company of fellas right there, they are just doing a good job. Centers, tackles, and guard just blowing people off the line of scrimmage. And, you know, I, I got a feeling they want it to go to fourth down. They love fourth downs. Keeps the clock moving. Nick Ross did, by the way, that was his 40th carry of the night. 171 yards and two touchdowns. Here comes carry number 41. And as he lunges across midfield in the Navasota territory for four more yards. Hey, you were more a pass oriented kind of coach. You ever have a running back? You handed to him 41 times in the game? Maybe once. Maybe once when they were just taking things away from us. We had a kid that went for 300 in, uh, in the quarterfinals uh, several years ago. But, uh, you know, it's not in a pounding, bruising way like this. And the, the thing that's unbelievable about Nick Ralston is how many carried the ball. He hasn't had any fumbles all year. This isn't the first thing for him. He's been doing this every game. Second down at six for the 49. Rodgers will toss it once more to Nick Ralston. Still turning forward. 
and Rossman will pick up the first down. I think there is an example, Brad, of what you said back in the first quarter, that eventually the constant pounding of Rossman would take a toll on Navasota's defense. Right, one, two, three, four, five, and he's still turning those legs. Of course, you know, look down there at those linemen that are with him. Now, they're just down there pushing that pile with him. Zach Mayhem was in there just churning away with him. So they they love this offense. They love Nick Rossman, and they just say, come on, get behind me, and let's go. And right now, they're eating clock, and they're this is the way that they want to win this football game. Amazing numbers being posted by Rossman. 42 carries for 179 yards. Not, and timeout being called here by Argyle because it's going to bring up third down and one. Argyle, that's their first timeout, second half. Now, again, that's another one of those situations for Argyle. And by the way, that's the Eagles' second timeout because they used the first one prior to the fake field goal. Here comes the correction on that. Second timeout. It'll be fourth down coming up, or third down for our guy. To get to a better state. By DQ, the stop sign of Texas. For the best tasting treats, eats, and drinks in Texas, stop at DQ. And by Ford, the Dream Big Sales event is going on now at your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. Evening descending on... Arlington, Texas, third on and one for Argyle, the Eagles, at the Navasota 44-yard line. Nick Ralston stopped short of the first down on his 43rd carry of the night. Fred Tarek Powell, a corner, coming up in run support to make the hit on Ralston here. I wondered how long it would take Navasota to start bringing some of that secondary. We don't need secondary guys back there on these kind of plays. When are you going to start bringing them? And they did that time. So I think you're going to see much of the same right here, but you just got to get the line of scrimmage a little faster and get behind those, get behind those big boys up front. Fourth down at one for the Eagles. Ralston again. And pushing forward, and I don't think he got it. Doesn't look like it where the spot's coming. Where the officials are coming in, it looks as though Navasota held on Nick Ralston's 44th carry of the night. But we'll wait for the spots and probably a measurement. Again, Navasota bringing a lot of pressure, run, you know, run blitzing that completely, not blitzing the quarterback at all. Now, here's the key to this. Where the ball is now, that's where it is. No replay, obviously. No respotting, anything like that. It either is or it's not, and it's not. Navasota has held at a time when the Rattlers desperately needed it with their exhausted defense having to defend Nick Rostin, but they came up with two big hits, and the last one here keeps Rostin from gaining the first down. Yeah, very impressed with that defensive stand there because they're tired and they knew what the score was. You know, they knew they had to have a stop. And, and third and short, fourth and short, what great plays for that front surge. Now, 5.36 to play in the ball game. Navasota has all three of its timeouts. Argyle leading 28-21. The Eagle defense has stymied Navasota on the last two drives. Effort under pressure. He'll go down, and that's how they've been stymied. Pressure on the quarterback, Taylor Sweat, Jacob Four, a sack and a loss of five. I can't say it enough, and you hear this you hear this talked about when you're watching TV on football games on Saturday, but that those are coverage sacks. I mean, that secondary is, is on those guys, and, and Epler has no place to go with the football. Loss of five and second down at 15. Epler sets up the screen. It's a short game to Sammy Blair. Only two. And now it's third down and 13 for the Rattlers. You're going to have to challenge. You're going to have You're going to have to find your number one guy. You've got to find Davian Dixon, and you've got to you gotta run a great stop route here or let him go. Third down and 12. Epler leaps it out. It is caught. And a big catch for it by Trent Davian Dixon. Just as you mentioned, Brad, he located it for 14 yards in a first down. It's just really tough to cover him man up. I mean, they've done a pretty good job tonight. I'm, I'm impressed with Zach Zimbraski and what he's done, but you know that 
Dixon is a great, great receiver, and you've got to use him. And how about Dixon just going to the marker, knowing exactly. where he needed to get for the first down. First and 10. And the Argyle 43. Again, downfield. Incomplete. Trying to find for Davian Brown. Had him just a little bit of an underthrow. I, I know Epper would love to have that one back because he had a step on him and just underthrew him just a little bit. Brown there. Reaching in and knock it away with Eric Ramon. Senior safety. Epler, by the way, over 400 passing yards. That's on that last pass to Dixon. Second and 10. And that's incomplete. Went behind Blair. Losing on the ball quickly was Estrada. It's incomplete. Now it's third down and 10. It is, and you can tell some of these hits that Epler's been taking, you know, Sweat has got him a couple of times. They have some good pressure, good blitz. They're taking some tolls on him. He's been inaccurate on his last two throws. Third down and 10. Epler throws it incomplete, and a flag down. Oh, Marquardt came in on Nick Gurka. And this will be a first down for Navasota. Huge call. Farco's breaking on the football. I, I, that's going to be a hard call to live with from either side, I'm sure. San Antonio chapter of officials coming over. We'll get the call here. Pass interference on the defense, number four. Fifteen-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's a big call. As you mentioned, here's another look. He's just going for the football. He does contact him, I guess, a little early. So, I mean, that's what the officials are going to see, uh, you know, because he was going with his right hand instead of his left. But that's a that's a that's that's an unfortunate call on a break on an interception. And that will take it down to the 28-yard line. Todd Rogers very upset with the officials' call. I'm talking be, to them on the sideline. Be interesting to see if, 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 uh, if the hunter hit the ball first. If his left hand happened to get on the ball be, you know, before it got to the receiver. That would be an interesting replay to look. They're going to call it a spot foul instead of the 15-yard. It's the spot foul. Well, we've placed at 34. That was the spot of the foul. And it will be a first down. So it turns out to be basically a nine-yard penalty. But it's enough for the first down to reset of the chains at the 34 of Argonne. Blitz coming again. And Epler somehow escapes. A flag comes in late as one of the Rattlers lost his helmet as well, but a whole lot happening on this play. The flag is really late. It'd be interesting to see what he calls. Epper does a great job ex escaping that one. Pressure was all over him. Big call here. The game would be eight yards. Got a 15-yard uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Navasota. Number 77 lost his helmet and continued on during the play. It's a 15-yard penalty. The player has to stop immediately whenever he loses his helmet. Wow. What a penalty. You saw Todd Rogers' response there as if to say, wow. Yeah. I, I don't like that call at all. I mean, if, if, how can you expect a young man that's playing his heart out loses his helmet to stop? The officials need to stop that. I'd love to see that rule changed in high school football. If, if, if there's a if there's a helmet off, uh, then you, you call it. But man, that is a that's a hard hard penalty on a young man that's is trying to play really hard. The Fedora talking about it. There is a timeout. Timeout. Navasota. Now here's the look at it again, Brad. Now watch Cal Bauer. Yeah, he just, I mean, he's just blocking his, he's just blocking. He's not going to quit blocking the guy because his helmet's off. He's just going to continue the play. If you stand there and don't continue to block, you might get run over and hurt even more. Yeah, or your guy may go hit the quarterback in the back of the head. I mean, now, the pursuit downfield may be when the flag was actually thrown. Could be. It might have been once Bauer started running downfield afterwards. Yeah. You know, that is the correct interpretation of the rule. And it I, is. And I know that we have a uh, great crew here working. I, I just wish that we could do something about the interpretation of that rule because that's a, that's a huge penalty on, on the Navasota team and for the kid that's just trying to play hard and protect his quarterback. 
Well, Cal Bauer, the junior right tackle, called for that. And it might well have been after when he was holding the block, when he started moving upfield, you heard the official saying he's supposed to stop immediately. Right, and so. It's 15 yards from the foul, which was five yards deep in the backfield. Now, it, they, 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 you know, so they lost essentially 25 yards. First and 25 from the 49-yard line. Downfield, incomplete, but another flag has come in. And, and if this is a, a defensive holding or a pass interference against Argyle, it's a complete reset of the chains. Exactly. And, and a brand new set of downs. I think you're exactly right. That's what it's going to be. I think Sembrowski was working hard. Holding on the defense, number three. It's a 10 yard penalty. It's going to be an automatic first down. Drew Estrada. And, then, and again, they're working hard. And that man to man, and uh, just having to get a piece of his jersey. Yeah. You can just see the jersey pull just a little bit. And that, that's. He was waiting for that guy to break across on that little shallow route, but anytime you see Jersey, it's going to get that call. Grabbed a hold of Jabrell Lipscomb's jersey. The end result out of all of this <laughs> is Navasota is five yards further back than they were when they were going to start the last play. So it's first and 10 at the Argyle 39. And up the sidelines, an incomplete that pass intended for Lipscomb. They've got to come back and see the run. If you if you look at this play again from the start, they go they put a backfield in motion and it completely takes Sweat out of the play. He completely follows the motion. There's not a linebacker, so that Navasota's got to see that and, and take advantage of some kind of run game. Second down and ten. Epler tipped it incomplete. It was intended. For Davian Brown and Eric Ramon got a hand on the football. A great, great defense, and again, defending that shallow cross, Ramon did a great job getting a hand in uh, to defend that. Again, that's how they made a live in the first half, and, and Argyle made some good corrections. Well, the Rattlers call their second timeout of this second half. And Brad, with 3.29 to go, clear to say, the Rattlers are all in here, all their eggs in this basket to try to get it into the end zone to get this game tied with only 329 to go. Yeah, I think so. You know, that they know if, if they give Ralston and, and the Eagles the ball back, that they can they can take three minutes away off the clock. So this is their shot. Uh, they, they're here and they know they've got to finish this. So I, I don't know if they'll go for it all on third down or if they'll say, you know, let's get let's get five to six and let's get it in two downs. It's been a second half of big plays. And a ball game of big plays on both sides. But here in the second half, started off through the air. What a catch by Dixon. Yeah. And in the, and in the fake uh, extra, uh, to get inside on fourth down. Big field goal. Key fumble by Tredavid Dixon. All right. Now out of the timeout. Now feel that pass incomplete. And that was over behind Rodavian Brown. Now it's fourth down, and it comes down to this. Again, great route by Brown, and, and Epley just leaves it too far inside. He's, Brown is wanting to run that route, that corner route, to the sideline, and, and Epper has just been a little bit off. I think he's a little rattled. He's been knocked around. I guess he can be, but he's got to be accurate on this throw. Fourth down and 10. Epler, now the pressure. Going to run for it. Hits and Epler close to the mark. Where do they mark it? Short of the first down. By one yard, it'll go over to Argyle. Great effort. You, know, you just have to know where you are. It's, you know, you got you got to know where that stick is and get a diving effort and uh, run like Ralston does. Again, you're tempted to go outside, and you just need to stick that foot and get up inside. And it was Drew Estrada. Watch the hit here, Brad. Sure, sure tackle there. Hold on. He was making an effort to get forward, had some help. Now, Argyle football from the 30. Three minutes, 13 seconds to go. Navasota can only stop the clock one time. 
So in essence, one first down might be enough for the Eagles to win this. Estrada, speed sweep, knocked down. I believe that's the first time this half that they've handed the ball to anybody other <laughs> than Ralston. Estrada, turn it upfield. Navasota had the big defensive stop last time to get the ball back, but now the clock, the enemy as much as the Eagles. And, uh, and I'll guarantee Cooper Rogers is just trying to manage this game right now. Just make sure I get everybody in the right place, take care of the football, keep it ours. Second and 10. Rostin's 45th carry of the night. And knocked down for no gain. Third down. Navasota, as we mentioned, has one timeout remaining, but they're going to have to have a stop here or it's academic. Yeah, they've done a great job. Coach Fedor's just keeping that in his pocket for, for this stop. If they can get him stopped and get him in a fourth down situation, I'm sure he'll use it. Uh, to give them seven. If they do, that, that's going to give them about a minute and a half uh, with the ball. And now, if you're Todd Rogers, do you hand it to Rostin again, or on third and ten, do you try to pick up the first down to ice it? Well, that's, a, that's a good question. Let's see what he's going to do. On third down, Rogers will go to the air. If he could find a receiver, hits, intercepted, picked off by Jabril Lipscomb. Oh, my goodness. And Navasota has the football in plus territory with a minute 39 to go. The one thing they couldn't afford to do, and, it, and what a tough play. That's the toughest play for a right-handed quarterback. Sprinting out to your left and trying to throw the ball back across your body and get hit at the same time. That's just a, you know, we talked about being smart, and that, that's a play that I know Cooper would, would love to have back because uh, he is an intelligent kid, but the competitiveness just came out, and, and uh, he just tried to squeeze one where he shouldn't have. It's at the 37-yard line of Argon. With a minute 39 to go, and Navasota still has that one timeout. So another opportunity for Shelton Epler and the Rattler attack. Go to find number two. Oh. Epler's pass broken up. Excellent play by Eric Ramon. Knocking it away from Sammy Blair. Eric almost returned the favor. Had a back-to-back -back picks there. Second down and 10. Epler out, caught. Pulled in by Gurkha. 15 yards and a first down. The clock will stop while the chains are advanced. And Nick Gurkha. Juggled it going to the turf, but the catch will stand. First down and 10 at the 22-yard line of Argyle. Epler to the air again. It's Dixon for the touchdown. Now he'll be marked at the one. Not a touchdown. Trendavian Dixon extended the ball across the goal line, but ruled down at the one. Here's the big coaching dilemma now. And you knew they had to come back to Trendavian at some time. They've kind of rocked you to sleep. Almost a great play to get in the end zone, but now it's first and goal on the half yard line. You know, a, a great goal line stand, run the clock out, and they score late to tie it. Or, you know, what do coaches look at? Because I would love as an offensive coach to have a four yard, a four down completely stand here and win the ball game, but man, that's a tough, that's a tough thing to do. So I want to leave myself with as much time as I possibly can in a tie game to be able to go back and try to get a score. Well, the Navasota has just called its final timeout. First, a look back at the interception of Cooper Rogers. You know, it's it's, it's just two foley sprinting out left is for a right-handed quarterback going back against his body and and great pressure against him. Gives, gives Navasota the opportunity to get the ball back in the hands of their playmaker uh, and almost, you know, an almost score. And when Trendavian Dixon went to the turf and the ball popped out, it could have been ruled that the ball came out first 
rolled Absolutely. through I just the saw end that. zone and out of bounds, which would have been a touchback, and the ball game would have been over. I just saw it. It's crazy to know. I wonder where the ball went after he hit his shoulder and had to go out of bounds. He was ruled down at the one. First and goal. Navasota. No timeouts left. 104 to go. And keeping his handler for the score. A pass-oriented team scores on an option quarterback keeper. Exactly, and, and that's the second running touchdown for Eppner tonight. They said ran the same play that they ran before. And again, I go back to, uh, as a defense, you don't tell, I mean, it's hard to tell your defense to lay down. But uh, when you got four chances at it at, from the half-yard line, they're probably going to score. So now Argyle's going to have a minute to try to do some of the football and get down because they do have an excellent field goal kicker. First, Dixon. After the score, the extra point kick is good by Martinez and the game is tied at 28 with 59 seconds to play in the ball game. Now here's another look at the Tredavion Dixon catch and run. Remember, if the ball is ruled to have come out, it would have been a touchback. We'll see him go down. It's out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. I'm telling you now, Todd Rogers is going to have nightmares when he watches that one. It's definitely out. Rolls over Trent Davian Dixon's back. And out of bounds is the first thing I saw after. Yeah. I mean, uh, in the NFL or college football with instant replay. That's a touchback. That's a touchback. Game over. Argyle possession. Game over. Mercy. Instead, it's a tie game with 59 seconds to go. And how about this? Argyle's last four playoff games have featured as margins of victory. Four points, three points, and three points. And maybe this one headed overtime. This is exactly what happened last week in the semifinals against the Graham Steers and Coach Kenny Davidson. Uh, you know, they scored late. Uh, Graham scored late, tied at 20-20. And I, and I think it was about 59 seconds. Argyle had the ball and went down and kicked the field goal as time expired to win it. Here's the kickoff. It'll be a touchback. So, Argyle will have it with 59 seconds to go from the 25-yard line. I think it, it's probably only fair to point out, Brad, that in this venue, with a giant uh, vision board for everybody to see, and with our great Fox crew and the technology that we have, and the power of the replay here in the booth. Right. We're going to see things that at many, many high school football, regular season and postseason games might similarly have happened, but would never be under the scrutiny, A, because this is a championship game, and B, because of all exactly. of the tools of technology. Exactly. So, Argyle with the ball at the 25. A quick pass and out of bounds to Gage McCook. The thing that's rough about this is now, now Argyle has to get out of character. They, they, they can't use Ralston like they've used him. They've got less than a minute to get down. I'm saying they have to get to the 25 to have a shot uh, at Estrada's range. So they're going to have to do some things. Now, now you're asking Cooper Rogers to be intelligent, smart, throw the ball in the right places, get it out of bounds. And he is smart enough to do that. Second down at seven. Now to Ralston. Across the 30. Lost and still on his feet, he goes down. Now the clock will stop while they move the chase. He picked up 15 more yards on his 46th carry of the ball game. <laughs> Nick Ross is at 194 yards. Amazing. And the clock will be started as soon as the ball is spotted, ready for play. It is. The clock is going. And before they get going, there's a false start. Yeah. False yep. start on the offense. Number 75, five-yard penalty, still be first down. Back on Zach Mahan. There you see Caleb Holt getting warmed up. I don't. I know Caleb is their extra point kicker, and, I, and I'm not sure who is their distance kicker, but I wouldn't be surprised for a long attempt it could be Estrada. First and 15, out of the 37, and Rodgers under pressure will take off and run. Oh, Rodgers not enough for the first down, so the clock continues. Actually, the clock stops now. 
as he goes down at the 41 yard line. You know, this is such a this is such a tough time and tough game, and it got to go that far. But you know, you, you, as a quarterback, you got to know when to get rid of the ball. You know, you got you got to throw that ball out of bounds. Cooper Rogers is a competitor, wants to run, uh, but he's also he was also on the UIL state championship team for calculators this year. So we know how intelligent he is, and he's just going to have to make great decisions on this drive. Can you imagine? Say you were on the state championship calculator team. <laughs> now, let, 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 let me bring folks up to speed on what has happened here. Argyle called a timeout and was ruled to have had one timeout left. We were counting timeouts earlier, including the one taken before the fake field goal. Right. By my count, this was a fourth timeout taken. You may be right, Chris. Nevertheless, you may be the only one that caught it. Well, now, with 29 seconds to go in the game, in the fourth quarter, I should say, because this thing will go to overtime unless Argyle scores, or now Minnesota comes up with a turnover and a score, and Rodgers is going to go down, and the clock is going to run. The real Hunter, the tackle, no gain on the play. Eagles have to hurry if they want to get off another play. Inside 10 seconds, maybe one last snap of regulation. Rodgers to hand it to Ralston. And Ralston going forward on what will be the final play of regulation. For the first time ever, the 4A Division I State Championship game will be decided in overtime. Shelton Eppler bringing Navasota back. Todd Rogers, those Argyle Eagles who rally. We'll have a three-minute break, a three-minute break. And I think both of the teams could use the three-minute break. You know they could, and you know it's, a, it's interesting to see at this point, you know, uh, the, the overtime rules have changed over the, few, over the years to, to where there's the possessions. Uh, I guess I, I would have to think that Coach Rogers didn't totally attack that last 59 seconds. So Simply because he feels like defensively right now he's doing some great things against him and, and, he, and he wants to go back to that. So we'll see what happens. All right, we head to overtime. It's Navasota and Argyle, the 4A Division I state championship. Another call, at and Stadium in Arlington, the 4A Division I state football championship game will go to overtime. Top ranked undefeated Navasota and number two unbeaten and defending state champion Argyle deadlocked at 28 in Texas high school football unlike almost every other state in the United States which uses National Federation high school rules in Texas they use NCAA rules so if you watch college football you know the overtime rules each team will get at least one possession from the 25 yard line of course ooh, no game clock we will have the play clock which have a timeout in the overtime. If we are still deadlocked after two overtimes, then any touchdowns would mean going for a two-point conversion. Compulsory on a touchdown in a third overtime. will be a coin toss. And, and of course, always, that's important. Take a look at the fourth quarter and how this game arrived at this point. And it, that's... Big interception, Brad, that helped Navasota get in position to try to tie it late. And then Trendavian Dixon ruled down at the one-yard line, even as the ball popped loose. Shelton Epler, quarterback keeper, in for the score. And so the game is tied at 28. Brad, as a head coach, what do you say to your team now? You've laid everything out there on the field for 48 minutes, and it's not done yet. No, it's not, and you try to prepare kids for this all year long for every game, and it, 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 some teams play a whole kid's career and never get to play in overtime, so uh, I loved it. I, I mean, I really enjoy it. You play, you just get, you, this is such a fun game that it's almost like we get to play some more, uh, but it's tough. You know, now, now defense really comes into play. you got to have a stop. 
You know, you want to you want to win the flip. You want to play defense first, so your offense knows what they have to do in the second round. So uh, it becomes paramount now if you to, to, that defensively, uh, if you can get a stop, if you can get a turnover, a field goal wins the game. So it's a uh, uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, but the pressure's on. The last time you had an overtime game in a UIL state championship, a marvelous game in Waco, Kilgore. Raging Red defeated the Lincoln Tigers of Dallas in double overtime. That was in the 4A Division II round, 33 to 28. Now for the toss of the coin, and one difference in high school, it's not the players that come out, it's the coaches yeah. that come out. Yeah, that's a great thing. Yes, sir. We just call it easy as the team. Uh, each team gets one timeout in the overtime. Okay. Uh, you're going to go ahead and call it. This is Hans. This is the UIL side. It's Tails. It's not the Pits. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. I'm going to let it hit the ground. I'm going to let it hit the ground. Leave Fedora. Navasota will call heads. Navasota has called heads. It is heads. You have the option in the first overtime. Play defense. They want to play defense. Which end of the field do y'all want? You want to go on that end of the field? Okay, y'all want to be on offense on this end of the field. That's one of the unique things about high school football, and I had a coach jokingly say to me when I said, how come you don't send captains out for the toss of the coin for overtime? He said, we don't trust the players at that point, <laughs> and when we're getting it in overtime, we'll handle it. Exactly. Well, the last time it went overtime, was 10 years ago in 2004 when Lincoln and Kilgore met in Waco. And in overtime, it was running back Keith Gillum. The left side in for the 18-yard score. Lincoln answers with a touchdown to tie the game at 27. Tigers lined up for a field goal in double overtime. It was blocked after this touchdown. Here at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Blocked. Return a walk-off touchdown. The Kilgore Bulldogs, their first state championship in school history, 33-27 in double overtime. So for the first time in 10 years, we have an overtime. And for the first time ever in 4A Division I. Argyle goes to work first, and that means you know who. Nick Roston. And a big carry that'll take him over 200 rushing yards for the night. 12 on that carry. His 48th carry that takes him to 207 yards. You think you'll see a steady diet of number 22 right there. And he doesn't look he doesn't look very winded right now. He looks like give me the ball, coach. Let's go. So first. And 10 at the 12. Roston. This time dragged down from behind. Frontier Powell, he's called him a couple of times. Corner Coming blitz. up from the corner, got him. Yeah, that, I think I think Navis put a nose. Hey, they're not going to throw the ball right here. So they're bringing that corner blitz off, and he's just getting down in that line of scrimmage. No, There's nobody can block him. They don't have anybody accounted for him. Um, They've got, to, they've got to watch that. Take advantage of it if it comes again. Second down. And 10. Carry number 50 for Nick Roston. And he's inside the 10. Out of the 7. Gain of 5. It's third down and 5 on his 50th carry of the night. Up to 212 yards, Taylor Soto the attack. They got some good blocks at the line of scrimmage, a point of attack. He's got to completely stay with them. The guy's got to find blocks downfield and help him out. Man, he is giving it, he's giving all he's got. Third down at five. Ralston, one more time to the corner with a blocker to the end zone. 
And Walston is across for the score. His 51st carry of the night. Taking Nick Ralston to 219 yards and three touchdowns. What a great lead block there. That was just a super job. Powering into the end zone. Here he comes right here, 40 backside slot. Great block, turns it off right there. There's another helmet off the play. Now Casey Harper, number 44, great lead block to get him in. For the conversion, Caleb Holt puts it through. Now the onus is on Navasota. So the defense knows what they got to do from Argyle now. Uh, you know, any any turnover, uh, anything, like you said, they'll go. It's a walk-off game over. Ralston powering his way into the end zone for his third touchdown of the night. Back to the oxygen, they say. There's not enough oxygen in this building. Let's give him a little more. 50 what? 51 carries? 51. Wow. For, the, for those of you watching the game and, and you, you love football, but you haven't followed a lot, I'm telling you, 51 carries in a ball game like a state I've never seen it. No. I've no, never seen a guy carry the ball in one game 51 no, times. It's almost unheard of. Now it's Navasota's turn, and the Eagles have to score a touchdown. To the air. Sliding catch. No catch. By Jadavian Dixon. Thought he had it. Looked like it bounced <laughs> in. Great effort. Great effort there. That's got, they got to go to their money guy. He's, he's, he's got to make a play. Second and ten. Epler. Pressure coming. He'll go down at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Taylor Sweat. The tackle. Epler's been sacked. Seven times tonight. That's not a sack there. No gain on the plays. He tucked it in, but there's been constant pressure on the Rattler quarterback. Yeah, he's and, and, and really it's he's been under duress all night, and it's really caused him to be inaccurate on some of his throws. He's taken a beating tonight. Shane McKinney, Argyle defensive tackle, down on the field right now. And third down coming up for the Rattlers here in overtime. We mentioned that this is the first overtime game in 10 years in the 4A Division II championship. Kilgore beating Lincoln Eye of Dallas. The year prior to that, in 2003, also in the 4A Division II state championship, Lamarck and Denton Ryan triple overtime. And Lamarck winning that one 42 35. Well, if we're going to have another one here tonight, Navasota's going to have to come up with a huge third down 10 play here. That'll be third. And 10. Move that safety. Moving across the are giving Dixon a lot of room. Epler. Looking. A lot of pressure coming. Now down the sideline, and that's it complete. We try to go back to Dixon, and the season comes down to one play. You know, he said, "I'm going to let my, I'm going to let my All-American go make a play." Missed him early on the shallow crossing route, uh, but he had to do something, and I'm going to go to that guy. So we got a last time out here, and like you say, the season uh, for both squads comes down to this play. So the timeout called by the Rattlers. They won a lot of timeout in overtime. Third overtime game here in 4A state championship history. 2003, Lamarck winning it over Dent Ryan, 43-35 in triple overtime in the Alamo Dome. And then 10 years ago at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Kilgore over Lincoln High of Dallas, 33-27. Now, Argyle, one defensive stand away from making it back to back state championships. Lee Fedora, the Rattlers. 
Now they have at least one play left. They need to pick up at least 10 yards here. Fourth and 10 for the Rattlers at the Argyle 25. Stepping out of bounds is Dixon. Not into the end zone, but he did pick up 18 yards on fourth and 10. It'll be first and goal, Navasota at the Argyle seven. That's so clutch. You know, Epson, he knew Epson, he knew where he had to go. Dixon made a great catch. Tight ropes, just out of bounds. But you know, that kind of pressure, fourth and 10 in this game was incredible. First and goal for the seven, excellent call seen by the official to see the out-of-bounds touch. Now Epler straight ahead inside the five and down to the three. Gain of four. Shane McKinney, who had been out, came back in. There's another look at Dixon on the sideline. So close. You know, just one out right there and got back in. You know, it's a, he thought he had it. And again, you see Epler carrying the ball. He's already got two running touchdowns tonight, so um, they may keep looking at this option. Look. Second and goal. Ball inside the four, and now Argyle is going to use its timeout here in overtime. So they're one a lot of timeout here in overtime. If we go to a second overtime, each team again will accrue one timeout. And you would play by the same rules. If this should advance to a third overtime, any touchdown that is scored would have to be followed by a try for two. They will they will flip ends. Obviously they score, they'll they'll they will they change ends of the field and then and then the other team would take the ball first so our, our guy would actually go back to back to defense again if they scored. But we still got three yards. It may be a long three yards. With the, my only concern of Navasota is their run game. They haven't relied on their run game uh, too much tonight so uh, are they going to are they going to test putting it in the air and risking a, a tip ball interception? Or are they going to stay with the run for a couple of plays? That's that's uh, that's what coach has got to coach Fedora has got to really look at right now. The football is just barely inside the four yard line on second and goal. Epler to the air, sliding catch, no. Dixon, yes, touchdown. First jumped up thinking he didn't have the catch. The officials say he do, and that he does, and it is a touchdown. Yeah, it's, it's a great piece of officiating there. The, the back judge was not going to call that. He was checking completely for the catch. And once he told that side guy that it was a catch, the side judge gives the touchdown signal. So nice, nice piece of officiating together there. Now for the extra point to send it to overtime number two. The kick is good. Well, close. They, 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 that's close to a block there. Here we go. To a second overtime. Another look at the touchdown. Dixon had to gather it in, Brad, here for the he, score. He really did. Of course, it, the ball was thrown where it had to be thrown. Epper put it down low. He had to get a safety in the back. And then Dixon did a great job going down after it. So, uh, well-devised scheme. Great catch. And uh, you know, what a fun game. I tell you, there's going to be some tired puppies out there tonight when this one's over. You know, we were talking about Nick Roston carrying the football 51 times. Sheldon Epler has thrown it 50. 27 of 50 for 458 yards and three touchdowns. Those two guys have been tremendous in what they've done for their schools. Yeah, they really have. Of course, Epler has thrown three, and he's also run two. Uh, so he's been had a hand in, in all of them tonight. So it, and the explanation, they'll resume play and they'll stay down at the same end of the field. So I guess what happens there is that, that the offensive team has a choice. They, they didn't flip again for who gets the ball. That flips, but the, 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 the one that doesn't get the ball, somebody has a choice. So our guy will stay on defense. Now it's Navasota's turn to start off on overtime. Overtime number two. One thing we can say is each of the games that have gone overtime in Class 4A have needed more than one overtime. This one overthrown. 
looking for Sandy Blair. Nice job by Upper looking the safety off, getting, getting him away. Had a shot. Pretty good eyes for a quarterback. Second down and 10. From the 25. Epler under some pressure. Outside, and a flag goes down. Epler will run. Would have a first down. But this may be coming back for a hold. All the way down to the 10-yard line. It would have been a 15-yard run. Holding on the offense, number 58. The 10-yard penalty. Still second down. Zach Pavlock called for the hold. Now it's second down and 20. Back at the 35-yard line. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough call. Great run by Upper. He did take a shot at the, at the end of the play. He didn't slide. He wasn't going out of bounds. And, and uh, you know, Dane Ledford decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a piece of this. So, man, tough, tough to come back right now. Now it's second and 20 from the 35. Receiver screen to Dixon. And here he goes. What an excellent job by Estrada to hold on to an ankle and limit Trendavian Dixon to eight yards when it looked like it could have been so much more. Yeah, what a great tackle. Just grab a foot and hold on. This could have gone. He gets one more move back on the inside. He's got a blocker. That, that may go all the way. Just a great open field tackle. Instead, it's third and 12. You've got you to gotta really look at what you want to do here. Wouldn't be surprised for another shallow cross out of it with two. So we'll pick out the inside and let Dixon come across the middle. Effort to throw again on third down. Over the middle and caught. Nick Gurka, 14 yards. It'll be first and goal down to Soda. Gurka's come up big, but I mean, this is a shot right here. Step in, really put some velocity on the ball. Effort does a great job. He knew exactly where he wanted to go the whole time. First down and goal. Navasota. Or first down at the 13, excuse me. Not first and goal. First down at the 13. To the end zone. Caught by and then dropped. And caught. Touchdown. Ruled touchdown. Dixon. The catch. Now a conference with the officials. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to stand. They're, they're, they're going to have to talk about that. The question, did he have it all the way to the turf? Pulled it down, hit the turf, the touchdown yeah. will stand. Ground can't cause the fumble. Good call, but I, I really like the officiating work, how they're getting together on that. So now what a tremendous athletic play. Good the, night. The key to this whole thing, Brad, and you know it, is did he have control when he hit the turf? Because you're right, the ground can't cause a fumble. It can cause an incompletion. Right. You have to have possession of it all Turn the way out. in. Navasota. Now. That's their timeout of the second overtime. Now, this is interesting. Because perhaps Lee Fedor is considering going for two here after the touchdown. Here's the, here's the look at the touchdown. Does Dixon have control all the way to the turf? He's across. Which I do feel like he does. His el both elbows were down before the ball came out. Great athletic move. Back shoulder turns. Possession. Elbows hit the ground. Then ball comes out. So he was actually in the end zone with possession. And the ground causes the fumble. So when his elbows are down, he's down touchdown. What an athletic move. Great back shoulder throw. I'm impressed. This kid has really come alive. Didn't think they used him enough during the game, but boy, they've gone to him late. Lee Fedora has set out the place kicking team, and it might have been to tell him to make sure to block well up. You mentioned how Argyle very nearly blocked the game, tying extra points to send it to overtime. And it's good. To send it to the second overtime, which is where we are right now. And it's 42-35 Navasota. So Argyle must score a touchdown with an extra point to get it to a third overtime. I want to remind you, coming up after this one, the 5A Division II state championship. And if it's anything like this, it'll be another classic. Cedar Park and Ennis for the 5A Division II State Championship.
You know those you know those kids from Ennis and Cedar Park are in the halls. You know they want to warm up. They get get out of these. We keep going to overtimes. It's a frustration for them because they got a big game tonight. But obviously it's a fun time for everyone here in this ball. Ball game. What a great competitive game that these two these two teams are showing us. There you see the Ennis Lions there, kind of trying to stay loose in the hallway. And there's not much you can do as a coach, are you, when you're waiting to no. take that take the field for your warm-ups. All right, Argyle must score a touchdown. To Rostin. Rostin this time dropped for a loss. Of two on his 52nd carry takes him back to 218 yards. Coy Imhoff, the tackle. A little uncharacteristic all night. He didn't stick that left foot in the ground and cut up the field. He kind of tried to bounce his, his lineman got out of the way. So that's a tough, tough deal for, for Argyle because he puts you behind the chains uh, for a second long. They love those third mediums to third, uh, second medium, second shorts. Second down at 12 from the 27. This is the second overtime. And Rodgers to the air, looking for Estrada. Not able to come up with it. Jabril Lipscomb, who had the big interception to give Abasota a chance to tie in the waning moments, broke up the pass attended. Intended for Drew Estrada. Yeah, Cooper does a great job, steps in, really, really throws a good ball. It just Lipscomb comes in and makes an incredible play at the end. That, that was just a great athletic play. And then hit the, the goal post, fortunately padded. And now it's third down and 12. We've got a screen game, it's time to use it. Back to the ground to Ralston. Ralston on his feet. A gain of seven yards. Lamarcus Jefferson the tackle, but now it's fourth down at five. Argyle must at least pick up five yards to keep the game going. What a tackle by Jefferson. Man, open field uh, on Ralston. He's been running over all night. That's, that's, a, that's a super tackle. Comes down to this. Coaches out there, what would you call? Fourth down and five at the 20. And a timeout call. Timeout. Oh, God. That is a timeout of the second overtime period. You want to be sure, don't you, Brad? <laughs> you really do. But I'll tell you, it's hard because, uh, you know, you, you second guess yourself. So you got, you got yourself, you got your offensive coordinator, you got Ralston. So you got all these opinions on what we need to do. And then it's all got to come back to that uh, that leader, uh, that head coach, that Coach Rogers, saying this is this is what we want to. Uh, obviously, Coach Rogers is not calling the offense. He has a, he's a great offensive coordinator, but I think in his position, uh, Coach Rogers is going to say, "All right, we're what you best run, what you best pass." Uh, I think we ought to go with the best run. So he's had a lot of input as to what they want. Uh, they may have a play designed specifically for this situation. We haven't seen it. Could be a two-point conversion play out of an offense. We don't know, but if they've got something that they believe in, this is where it is. Because how can you believe in anything other than Ralston right now? So I, my guess is the ball's going to go through his hands. He'll need five yards. He has totaled 226 yards on 53 carries tonight. If they hand him the football, he will need to gain the 15-yard line. If it were me, you'd see that little sprint draw, and I would give Rawson the ball. On fourth down. It's to Ralston. He'll go down. Navasota has won the 4A Division I state championship. Wow, incredible defensive stand there. Jabril Hunter made the hit. And on his amazing 54th carry of the night, Nick Rostin was stopped, and the Navasota Rattlers have won the state title. You know, it's just, you, you don't second guess that call. 
You go back, you give the ball to your bell cow. He's run for over 200 yards tonight. Your offensive line is pushed. You overload that side and you give the ball to Nick Ralston. You know, I know there'll be a lot of people out there that second guess that on the fourth and five, but that's what that's what got you here, and that's where you're going to finish. You know, I, I, I wouldn't second guess the call at all. A second state title in three years for Lee Fedora and the Navasota Rattlers. What a ball game. What an amazing game tonight in two overtimes. Navasota with the win. Here's another look. You know, they just, they just didn't get it blocked at the point of attack like they have. You know, there were three instead of one. One guy, Ross, has been running over all night. Again, Navasota just sold out. Uh, they just... They just sold out to get in the hole. And, and Nick just couldn't get outside with his blockers. You see them all trying to pull him. You know, what a, what a great play. And Lee Fedora can't, can't hardly believe it himself. Perhaps overcome for the moment. And an absolutely amazing game. It, it was all as advertised. Number one, number two. What more could you possibly ask for from two undefeated teams? Ranked number one and number two in Texas all season long yep. on a collision course to play for a state championship. Absolutely. Yeah, if you if you if you bought a ticket tonight, if you're in here tonight for these two ball games, especially this last one, uh, you got more than your money's worth tonight of Texas high school football and a couple of class act programs that you know that, that, there weren't any knuckleheads out here tonight. Everybody did their job. You didn't see any stupidity in play. Your coaches were strong. I, I just thought it was incredible. And there you, you see Coach uh, Rogers and his son. And I, I got to tell you, you've been there. You have been there I, twice. My heart just. Uh, my heart just, man, emotional for me. I've been there twice with my kids, um, and uh, that is a that is a time that uh, dad and son, because son is I guarantee son is saying, dad, I'm sorry I didn't get it for you, and uh, as a dad and a coach, I you know I, I'm uh, I got a lump in my throat now, but uh, bless them. That's a tough tough situation. What do you what did you say to Cold after the loss to San Augustine? What did you say to Case? After the loss to Carthage, well, they both they both put it on themselves, and I just told them, it, it's, you know, it's not them. This is a team game, and, and it just didn't happen. It was crazy with Colt uh, when we lost to, to St. Augustine. Colt had been through seventh, eighth, and ninth on a JV varsity, had never lost a game. He was 51 and 0, and he was on the field after that game, and he was kind of uncontrollable. And I, I said, "Come on, you can do it. Get up, let's go." And he said, "Dad, I, I don't know how to do it. I've never been here." So these kids, you know, they, they've won 31 games in a row. That that boy right there has not been on the field playing quarterback after a loss. So he didn't know how to take that. But he's got a good dad. He's got a strong group of kids and coaches around him. It's just a very emotional moment that that, that dad and that kid will never forget. Well, let's take you to our DQ big play of the game because it turned out to provide the final margin of victory. The pass to Trent Davian Dixon. Yeah, what a, what a, that's where you got to go. I mean, two teams offensively that went to their wheelhouse. You're going to go to Davian Dixon for the score you got to have. Argyle's going to go to go to Nick Ralston for the score you got to have. And uh, you know, you, you go down and you, you ride you ride the horse that you came in on, and, and both teams did that. And it was it was just an incredible game to watch. For all of the passes to Blair earlier, it still wound up being Dixon in the end. 12 catches, 177 yards, and four touchdowns tonight. He will finish his junior season this year with 39 touchdown catches. That, that's that's almost uh, that's PlayStation numbers. You just don't you just don't see that much. And, and incredible uh, act, athletic ability. Because some of those weren't. He had one catch tonight that was over the shoulder. He had two more that really had to make athletic catches. All right, Lee Fedora, the head coach of the Rattlers, down on the field with our Brooke Bentley. Coach, it took two overtimes in a back and forth game. What kind of fight did your players show here tonight? Fight they've had all year long. You know, we talked to them about overtime. We've been doing it every Thursday in practice. And, you know, it's against our scout team. And there was a scout team time, sometimes put the points on us, but we wanted to get them prepared and it was able to get them prepared for a game like this. Trindavian Dixon with a spectacular one-handed catch. Where did that rank among his 39 this season? 
Well, he would tell you it don't matter. He won that W. I wish I could say I used to catch a ball like that, but that kid, he's an athlete, and he's just a tremendous young man. I'm so proud of him, but what I love about Trent David, he doesn't care about his records. He cares that his team won the state championship. Shelton Epler with nearly 500 passing yards, accounting for five touchdowns. Talk about his effort. Well, I thought he did a great job for the pressure put on. I know you asked me at halftime, we're going to change things up, but with them playing man, we had to throw the ball. I don't even know if we had much rushing yards, but like I told them, we're usually a balanced team. Whatever they give us, we got to take, and that's what we did tonight. Your emotions after the game, all the players just going crazy, jumping up and down. Just talk about that feeling you had on the field. I just love those kids. That's what it's all about, trying to make these guys ready for the real world. Coach, go enjoy. Thank you. That's the emotion Back of the evening. Thank you, Brooke. A great moment there. And uh, this game was so good, we couldn't have just one forward player of the game. There were two tonight. One on each side. And uh, yeah, and how could you not salute Nick Ralston for what he did? 54 carries. 54 carries, 221 yards and three touchdowns. And Shelton Epler, 30 of 54. 54, the operative number here tonight. Epler, 54 passes. Ralston, 54 carries. Shelton Epler completes 30 of 54 for 493 yards, four touchdowns, and ran for two scores, including the game-tying score, to get the game to overtime. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, those numbers, are they're not even hardly real numbers. Uh, uh, some of those are, for, some kids won't have those numbers in three different games, but I, I, it just goes back to, and we've had it in both these games tonight. Uh, Coach Fedor just said it in er earlier in the night. Uh, Coach has said it as well. It goes back to leadership. And, I, and the, I, these teams have great, great leadership. And, and leadership is not about me, it's about you. And the definition should be other people's success. And when you look at these two people, it is about how I can make my team successful. Trendavia Dixon wound up with catching what proved to be the game-winning score, and he's on the field with our Brooke Bentley. Yes, here with Trendavia. You have the gold medal around your neck. How good does this feel? First off, I'd like to thank God for putting us in this position. But honestly, it's a great feeling, man. I've been working so hard. My team been working so hard, and I told them, never give up. I made a big mistake early in the game, and I just kept my head, and I told my teammates, we're going to win this game. You had a spectacular touchdown to catch a one-handed one, and then you had a big one in overtime. Talk about how those ranked in your 39 this season. 39? Can't remember the rest of them. <laughs> That's the best right there, the last four. I can't remember the rest of them. All right, well, I'll let you go enjoy with your teammates. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, back to you. That's the perfect response. <laughs> it's like Lee Fedora said, it didn't matter. All that mattered was the here and now. And uh, the here and now ended up producing the game winning and you, score. You know, that, that what he said is really, is really cool because the resiliency of the kid. You know, he had the huge fumble on the kickoff return that gave him the ball and let Argyle get some momentum and go score. And, that, and he went, he took himself back to that. Hey, I messed this up, but I told my team, let's go, I'll fix it. That, that's, that, that's pretty cool. Disappointment, no doubt, for the Eagles. And now time for the most valuable players to be announced offensively and defensively. And Dr. Charles Brightup ready to present the offensive and defensive MVPs. From Argyle High School, number seven, Taylor Sweat. Well, Taylor Sweat had two of those sacks of Shelton Epler. And even the one that he didn't sack him in hit him and knocked him out of the ballgame for yep. a play. Yeah, a lot of pressure. Sweat was on it all night long, you know, covered out of the backfield. And so he uh, he's very deserving of this, of this award. I said two. It was actually three sacks for Taylor Sweat. And he's the... Defensive MVP. Yeah, as, as you as you look at this, I mean, great pressures. He's on, he's around the football all night long. Great hit, uh, great pressure that came off on Epler there. Another great sack of holding on. I mean, he's just he's been, he was in and around the football all night long. With Taylor Sweat of Argyle, the defensive MVP.
from Navasota High School, number two, Trindavian Dixon. And Trindavian Dixon, the offensive MVP. We told you about his eye-popping receiving numbers. 12 catches, 177 yards, four touchdowns. Yeah, that's just a that's a career night right there. And just a junior. Something else. And I'm sure there'll be the conversation about the catch down at the one-yard line. The ball popped out later, but it's a bank-bank call by an official without the benefit of replay. Right. Winds up going to get over, and then he makes, in addition to that, man, what an incredible catch what there. A catch. I mean, just concentration against two people. Uh, here, here's another one, back shoulder throw. This is the one you were talking about there. It's, uh, it, it's going to be uh, it's That's gonna... the one in over top of the first one there, and, and Dixon... Getting what proves to be the game-winning score. Now the presentation, the state runner-up trophy to Coach Todd Rogers of the Argyle Eagles. We congratulate the Eagles of Argyle High School for an outstanding season. I mean, that's, a, that's a tough one, but you know, they know both ends of that. This, exactly this time last year, they were standing on the other side getting the championship trophy, so they, they understood both ways. The Rattlers of Navasota High School. With a record of 16 0, Keith Lee Fedora and his team have achieved the goal of becoming Texas High School State Champions. Coach Fedora will now accept the championship trophy. From Superintendent Roy Gresh, Principal Derek Oak, and School President John Price of Minnesota ISD. Congratulations on an incredible season. Ladies and gentlemen, your 4A Division I state football champions, the Rattlers of Navasota High School. Incredible season, amazing game. It really has been. Well, what, I tell you what, it's a amazing to watch kids and the life lessons they learn from these ball games. And I just want to take this time, uh, Craig, to tell you what an awesome job that you've done and being the voice of these games for such a long time. I'm honored to be able to work beside you tonight uh, in, in these and, and uh, just love what you do uh, for these kids and, and kids all over the country. So thanks again for what you do. And you, you mimicked what we saw tonight, just a class act, two class teams and class coaches. Hey, I feel like I learned something every time I work next to a coach, you know. So I, I enjoy it. Thanks very much. Well, that's just game two. Why not take a breath? Get ready. There's one more to come tonight, and it could be every bit as good as this one, the 5A Division II Championship between the Ennis Lions and the Cedar Park Timberwolves. First, our nonstop state championship coverage continues. After this, with more championship live with Rick Renner, Greg Tepper, and Randy Rogers. And then... We'll have the 5A Division II title matchup. Cedar Park and Ennis. For Brad McCoy and Brooke Bentley, I'm Craig Way. Navasota wins the crown. <laughs>